Hello, everyone. Welcome to Little John Yarns. I'm Alicia. As I, what I usually say, if this is your very first time here, what we like to do is talk about anything, crochet, and drink a little bit of wine. So how is everybody doing today? What's the weather like where you are? What time is it? Right now, I'm in Pennsylvania, near Pittsburgh. Actually, it's pretty cool fall weather, uh, fall weather type day. Right now, it's 72 degrees, and it's beautiful. Uh, it's just me and my husband here today. My daughter's away at college. She just called and she forgot I was about to do a live stream. As my husband just said, he's like, she should know. You've been doing a live stream every Saturday at two o'clock for the past two years. But she forgot. That's okay. So I talked to her for a couple of seconds and that's it. So let me hop into the comments and see what's going on with you guys. Here we go. Uh, seeing some people that were here from the get-go. What's up, Samantha? How are you? And Annie. Oh, and my girl. Here we go. Miss Denise, Didi the Designer. How you doing? Let's see who else is here. My girl, Gloria. She says, good afternoon from the shy. And Miss Leanne, one of, another one of my favorites. It's raining like, like a lot in the Netherlands. Like, what's a lot, a lot? Is it potential flooding? What is it? All right. Oh. Before I keep going on and introducing and talking to people in the comments, I just want to let you know, I say this every single live stream, but if you find me talking too much, all the patterns that we're going to be talking about in this video, when I'm showing you pictures of, they're all linked down in the description box below. So you don't have to worry about any of that. And what else? Where am I? Back into the comments. All right. And we get Lisa. She says, hello, everyone. I like that. Lisa, the granny scattered all the way. Oh, the Grammy scattered all the way. I like that name. So what we're doing here today, we're going to be looking at different versions of pumpkins. It's fall. The leaves are turning colors. So it's finally time to pull that yarn that's been sitting in your stash all summer out and try something pumpkin-esque. So, you know, what else was I going to tell you about? All right, I guess we'll hop directly into this roundup. Remember, all of these patterns are free and linked down in the description box below. But before I go into the first two patterns, what I like to do is ask you a question. So the question I'm going to ask right now, what's been happening to you during this week? It can be about crochet. It can be about anything. Let me know what's been happening during the week. But before you put it down in the comments, make sure you put question marks in front of it so I can obviously see it and pull it to the front. If you notice how I pulled up comments, I can do that to yours. So ooh, I didn't have this set up behind the screen. I have to share my screen. So give me a second as I set that up. Hmm. There we go. I have the screen shared. All right. So we'll hop directly into this roundup. The very first one, this is called the pumpkin coaster. You can make these cute pumpkin patterns in just a few rounds using only basic crochet stitches. They're quick, they're cute, and they're perfect for the harvest season. After all, fall is an excellent time of year to enjoy hot beverages. Oh, I can go for some apple cider. I have not had that yet this season. I guess the season just started. These coasters are super simple to make. I think coasters were one of the first couple things I learned to make when I was young. Once I learned how to work it around, you can make circle anything. I used to make ornaments or what? I can never say the word. Is it appliques? How do you say the word applique? I can never say it right. All right, we'll go move on to pattern number two. This is called the Gourd Just. Get it? It's a nice little play on word. Gourd Just Pumpkins. I can't resist a good pumpkin, and I can't resist a good pun. So obviously, this pattern had to be included in this free crochet pumpkin pattern roundup. This design really shows off the creative ways you can decorate and finish pumpkins. The designer of this pattern is Green Fox Farm Designs. These are super cute. I never typically crochet anything for like the holidays as decorations, but I do love looking at them. They're so pretty. See, I'm always interested in what yarn people use because I'm color incompetent. Any other pictures on this page? Those are super cute. So I'm going to hop back over here. I'm going to tell you what's been going on during my week. So before these last two uh, 
patterns that we looked at, I asked you a question. The question is, what's been going on with you during the week? And if you find myself talking too much and you want to get back into this pumpkin patterns, remember all these pumpkin patterns are down below. So this week, my daughter came home to visit. I haven't seen her in exactly a month. She only came to visit for like maybe 10 hours. Her friend came in. They wanted to see a band from the old high school. So she got home at like 10 o'clock. My husband cooked this huge meal and this spread. We were all waiting for her to come home. She was supposed to show up around six, but then they were running late. Then she said, I could pick her up at nine. Then she said, no, you don't have to pick me up. And she came home at 10, but it was such a nice time seeing her. Uh, my son even shed a tear when he's seen her. He's 10 years old. He hasn't seen her in so long. His sister is like his best buddy and she's gone away. But that's what's been going on with me. Oh, and also, if you notice down on a, a ticker going across the screen, it says you can have a free business uh, crochet consultation with Karen V. Miguel. She is a crochet handmade guru. Always, usually towards the end of the uh, my show, people always ask me, how do you make money? You can have a free consultation and talk to her. All that information is linked down below just in case. So what's been going on with you? Make sure you put a question mark in front so I can bring you to the front. I didn't mean to rhyme. I guess it's not a rhyme when I just repeat myself. Let's see. Ooh, congratulations. Caitlin Petty says oh, she's also one of my members. I have a booth today at a art walk. Ooh. What are you doing online? Are you sitting at the booth now while watching me? What's going on? That's always so exciting. My girl, SD Symphony. I took a week off work, so I've been hanging out and relaxing all week. You know what? Well deserved. Cheers to you. And my buddy, Miss Gloria, enjoying being laid off from that stressful job and crocheting every day. Loving, loving this time of the year. Sometimes I know uh, during this pandemic, people got laid off or transitioning to working from home or just trying to figure out what to do. It's, oh, love you, baby. Where are you going? Okay. Oh, that's another story I got to talk about. My husband, he quit his job, but back to you. But during this pandemic, you're able to reflect and realize what exactly you want to do. That's what's been all over the news, uh, at least in the United States, if you're watching here, um, outside of here. It's been called the great resignation where people are like, you know what? I'm getting fed up with the amount I have to work and what I have to do. There's other ways to make money. And speaking of the great resignation, and I'm happy for you. I hope you're making that crochet money. And remember, if you want a consultation, make sure you click down below for Karen V. Miguel's. I forgot to link her YouTube channel too, but it's probably all linked. You can find it through her somehow. So Karen V. Miguel. But uh, my husband... He just left his job. What was it? Friday? No, Thursday was his last day of work. He was done. He was a food technician. What he did, he went into restaurants and fixed foods, but he has a love for cooking. He's loved cooking since he was a small boy. If this is your first time watching this, my husband is the best cook in the world. I can't cook. I don't cook dinners at night. My husband cooks. I burn water. But this is his passion, and he decided, I want to be a chef. I want to cook. He's been working inside with these restaurants, and he's trying to grow his own business and do other things on the side. So now that's what he's doing full time. So cheers to him and to you, Gloria. Shanita Brown. Oh, Brown, you, we might be related. That's my maiden name. Nothing's been happening, just trying to get all my whips done. Works in progress. Ugh. Good luck to you. Kim says, help my youngest daughter into her new home and busy milking cows. Cheers to you. I've never milked, milked a cow, but I did live next to a farm when I was young. I grew up in the country. Like each house was like two acres away and a field over yonder. But, you know, whew, milking cows. Oh, Tammy says, I've been fostering eight baby kittens cheers to you let's see what else i'm gonna scroll i don't want to miss anybody mm. jay's crochet set my first crochet pattern went live cheers 
That's so exciting. Make sure you promote it on your social media pages and make sure, you know, like, hey, I got this pattern. Go check it out. My Gorilla Good says finish whips for upcoming artist showcase. I've always, you know what? I, I don't think I have nice enough things to do a showcase. You must have such beautiful crochet. I'm just such a basic crocheter. So cheers to you. Leanne, I knitted my first sleeves to my sweater. I had to pick up stitches from the body and procrastinated for a long time. I got myself, uh, wait, I got myself to through it though. It was surprisingly well. It went surprisingly well. Ooh, my words were all jumbled. Sorry about that. I don't mean to mess up your words. It's amazing. This goes back to me. Uh, oh, I have to say it again. About every 10 minutes or every five minutes I say this. If you want to see these crochet pumpkin patterns, and I'm talking too much, all these free patterns are listed down in the description box below. They're absolutely amazing. The designers are amazing. I just talk a lot. It's a live stream. This is what we do during a live stream. Let me hop back into this. I was going to say something, but I went off on a tangent. I wish I can rewind me and watch to see what I just said. Oh, I see some congratulations to my husband. Oop, and I'll look at the last one. Okay, Coach MN. I live one town away from Salem, Massachusetts. So I'm home crocheting a spider web shawl and avoiding the Salem traffic. There's nothing better than home. I just love being alone crocheting by myself. It's one of my joys. All right, so we're gonna hop back into this pumpkin pattern. Remember, all these patterns are listed down below. And I forgot to um, mention, I usually do, during the last year, if you notice this side behind me says you can help support this channel through Super Chat. This is the job that I do full time. Don't think that uh, YouTubers are millionaire. When you click the Super Chat button, you're able to donate to people like myself during the live streams. And when you do, these lights will go off, those bubbles will blow, and you'll get to spin my wheel of patterns and receive a pattern from my shop. So I just wanted to let you know about that. All right, so let's hop back into this roundup. Oh, wait, not yet. I didn't ask you your question. The next question. Have you started your holiday crocheting? If you haven't, have you started planning? What are you thinking about making? Or if you haven't, don't say no, you haven't. But make sure you put question marks in front of it so I can bring it to the front. Okay, now we're going to hop back into this roundup and we'll look at the next pumpkin patterns. And remember, all these patterns are free. This one is called the, did I share my screen? I did. This one is called the Pumpkin Jar Cozy. <clears throat> Excuse me. This beautiful pumpkin jar cozy will be the star of the show when you use it as a centerpiece for your table. I think this will be also really cute for fall wedding decor. I love the decorative shell stitches and the clever drawstring stem. The designer of this pattern is Bow Ties. Oh, this is cute. That would be cute for a wedding type decor. See, I couldn't do anything for wedding decor. I didn't know how to plan a wedding, so me and my husband ran away to Vegas. That was my wedding. So number five. Wait, wait, I didn't. Oh, no, I'm missing a good one. Oh, crap. All right, guys, give me a second. This is a really beautiful pumpkin that you have to see. And I did not have it set up. Where is it at on my website? This is this word. Uh, remember, I'll say you can find the patterns link below. This is the site you'll come to. My site, Little John Yarns. And this is the absolute beautiful pattern you had to see. Here it is. Oh, beautiful. This is called the Moody Pumpkin. Who says pumpkins have to be orange? The Moody Pumpkin features a get out of here ad. There we go. The Moody Pumpkin features a modern color pattern of blues, browns, and orange. This unique and trendy pumpkin will look amazing no matter where you decide to display it. The designer of this pattern is Karen Design Team. Oh, okay. Sorry about guys about that, guys. I usually have everything set up so nice. That was annoying. That last pumpkin was amazing. That's something I would probably make and just display all fall long. I usually don't make anything for myself. I, I need to start making things. So what the question that I asked you before, 
what have you been making for this holiday, Christmas holiday season coming up in a couple of months? Have you been making patterns or gifts for friends and family? Are you or aren't you? So I'm going to answer that myself. No, I don't. Typically, anything that I'm going to crochet, I'll give away. I asked my daughter, she was in college right now. I'm like, does any of your friends wear a size seven, eight slipper? Because I've been making slippers out the Wahoo this year. So I'll give those away. If whatever doesn't go away, I'll donate the rest. I usually don't make anybody crochet Christmas gifts anymore. I guess because now crochet is my life. If I'm going to take hook the yarn, there's going to be a camera on top of it now. Mm. So let's see about you guys. Let's start down from the bottom. Elle says, just completed my last two projects yesterday to make way for holiday crocheting. One scarf and one scarf in and colors pulled for the next. Plan to make throws, scarves, and etc. Ooh, you're ahead of the game. That's beautiful. Adrena Jones, I'm crocheting a look-alike sack purse for the ladies. Ooh, that sounds nice. Actually, when I was still working at my uh, previous job, every year they had like a Secret Santa. I would crochet for Secret Santa always. David! It feels like it's been eight years. What's going on? I made some shawls in Christmas colors for funds, but otherwise, not much. Let's see, scroll... I'm going to be skipping around through the comments now. If I miss your comment, I'm sorry, but you can re-comment it again. That's okay. I won't think you're screaming at me. Just copy, paste the comment again, and maybe I'll get to it when I scroll through. All right, Tammy says, I finished one blanket, two more to go, and I'm making some air warmers with ponytail openings. Ooh, that's nice. Divergent says, I started in July and still only one third way done. It's okay. <laughs> What's up, Annie? Haven't started yet. Would love to know what WIPS is. WIPS is works in project, You're in progress. You ever start making a blanket and quit and toss it to the side, then start making a hat and toss it to the side. Those two are works in progress. You just haven't finished them yet. Hey, what's up, Caitlin? Yep, socks, coasters, coasters and mittens. Tura eight star. Yes, since the beginning of August, you're ahead of it. Let me keep scrolling up what's going on. Oh, we got some hellos. You must have just got here. Uh, Simonette, 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 Simone. Am I saying your name right? That's like the more I say it, the more wrong I have it. France, hello, everyone. That's why it's French. That's why I am butchering your name. I am so sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, us Americans and not knowing anything. And Mary Jo Brink. I've been crocheting since I was seven years old. My grandma taught me how. Me too, when I was seven years old. I don't know. Does it doesn't feel like you... I don't remember life without crocheting. I don't remember not crocheting. It's always been something I've done. Mm. So we're going to hop back into this roundup. So what's another question I'm going to ask you? And remember, guys, if you're just now getting to this live stream and you're like, she's talking too much, all the patterns are linked down in the description box below. Don't worry. They're free. They're beautiful. The designers are awesome. Some of these patterns even come with video tutorials so you can read them and watch them at the same time. So the next one. All right, guys. It's I always call this yarn season or crochet season, usually around October to December. This is where anybody that has a yarn business starts hustling. Are there anybody who has a yarn business or who are new to yarning it out this year or starting their own crochet entrepreneurship? Let me know. Put question marks in front of it and just, you know, shout out your business. Let us hear about it. Put it in the things and question marks in front of it so I can pull it to the front. Sometimes I just babble. Let me get my notes ready. Oh, we're already on number six, halfway through, more than halfway through, because we have 10. <laughs> Here we go. Share my screen. We did that. We Oh, there's that pumpkin. 
Here we are. This is the Tunisian Fall Pumpkin. Have you tried Tunisian crochet yet? It's kind of like a cross between crochet and knitting. In tree, this would actually be pretty good first project because the design has many helpful videos for this pattern. The designer of this pattern is Knitter Knotter. That is cute. Know what? I would see, I don't make this. I wouldn't buy this from another crocheter. That is cute. Okay, let me go move on to the next one. It seems like all I say is that is cute, but it is. I'm not very descriptive with my words, unfortunately. <laughs> this one is number seven, the autumn harvest pumpkin. The next one on our free crochet pumpkin patterns gets its signature look by alternating between solid color yarn and variegated yarn. You'll also be alternating between single crochet and double crochet stitches for an easy and interesting look. The designer of this pattern is a Nitty Habit Designs. I think they had a whole bunch of pictures on here. If you ever want to like check out what these patterns look like worked up by other people who are not the designer, I would recommend going over to Ravelry and looking for the pattern. You can always see like people who completed the pattern as regular people and they'll post their pictures on Ravelry. That's how you can tell if it's a good pattern or not. If those people's patterns or finished work matches the pictures. Just letting you know. Hmm. So... I got a message. That's where I paid my bill. That's what the message was. The question is, do you have a crochet business? Are you starting a crochet business? Hey, do you have a craft fair coming up? Let me know. Put question marks in front of it. If you don't, that's all right. Just say you don't have one. So crochet business myself, I've told this story many times. Before I became a YouTuber blogger, I sold my hand finished handmade goods all on Facebook and things like that. I enjoyed selling my handmade things, but eventually I transitioned now. I'm all on YouTube. I don't sell any of my finished um, items. And people always ask me like, Alicia, give me tips on how to sell my handmade goods. And I feel like some of my tips might be outdated for selling finished goods. If you want to make money through blogging, through uh, written patterns, I'm your girl, but if you want to figure out how to make money through um, selling wholesale or at craft fairs or things like that, you need to check out my girl, Karen V. Miguel. You'll probably notice those links going down below. I took her class this past spring. I was able to take, even though it was for um, selling finished goods, I was able to take her information and put it towards what I'm doing now and increasing my pattern sales and increasing my online presence, all of those wonderful things. But that's linked down below. So let me see about you. Oh, yes, yeah, a free consultation. That's what's awesome. Let's see. Start from the beginning. Vijay's Crochet. I sell finished objects in my cousin's online store. I am on YouTube and Facebook. How's that going? Let me see. Oop, I'm trying to scroll up. My computer froze. Mary Jo, uh, she says, I'm now crocheting a two-tone gray baby afghan for my granddaughter's first baby, and the shower is October 23rd, so I have to get crocheting, but I keep falling asleep. It's relaxing. Know what? Is it a blanket where you have to count? That counting can get you, like, one, two, three, increase, one, two, three... Maybe you just need something. I guess if it's just one of those, a granny stitch, that can... It all can put you out. It can. Oh, we have a super chat. My lights went off. Are my bubbles going? And my bubbles are going off. Somebody donated via super chat. What's up, Cheryl? Thank you so much for donating. Cheers to you. Mm. And remember, anybody who donates via super chat gets to spin my wheel a pattern. So let's get that. Let me see if I can turn off the buttons back here. I'm using a different chair today, so it's weird. Here we go. The Wheel of Patterns. Did I share the screen? Yes, I did. Here we go. Let's spin. You win my rainbow set. Let me go over here to my Etsy shop. 
so you can see the picture of what you're getting. Oh, luckily it is right here. So in order to get this crochet pattern, you have to, if you remember, <laughs> email me at littlejohnyarns at gmail.com. My email address is linked down in the description box below, but I'm sure you remember. You're one of my faves. Here we go. All right, so where were we? Let me scroll up because I know there's a lot I'm missing. Do, 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 do. I'm just going to pull down from the bottom. Here we go. We'll hit up my girl, Maria. If I missed your comment, it's because everything scrolls so fast. Copy, paste, send that same comment again. I'll read it. It's okay if I miss it the first time. <laughs> Maria says, ooh, me, 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 me. The shirt, well, I'll girl, your name. Skirt. Schirkenbach. Schirkenbach. There we go. The Schirkenbach Mass and Craft Emporium. I'm just a tiny little company right now, but working hard to grow. I make sewn gifts, crochet items, and of course, masks. She is a wonderful mask maker. Your mask, I love them. It was funny. I, uh, you know, we have to wash our masks all the time. I guess you, she made, uh, Maria made me this beautiful mask. It has wine glass all over it. I guess my son was about to wear it to school. He's like, I got my mask. I'm like, oh, wait, he's 10. I'm like, you cannot wear that mask to school. That's mommy's special wine mask. You can't wear that. You're going to get, Maria, you almost got my son suspended. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, she has an awesome business. Oh. Uh, David says, my business is design and patterns, plus my YouTube channel. Actual crochet output gets donated because I can't be bothered with retail sales. Yeah. Oh, that's a wonderful thing about Karen. She teaches you how to outsource the work so you have other people crochet and you sell wholesale. That's amazing. Here we go. Caitlin says, Cat's Creation. Find it on Facebook. Guys, make sure you Google her. Then I'm going to yell at you too, Kobe. My friends are yelling at me to start a crochet business, but I haven't committed yet. Do it. Why not? If it's something you love, before I started crocheting full time, don't think I am a huge crochet millionaire. Listen, I make enough to i can pay my rent i still have to pay my own insurance and pay my daughter's insurance and all these others and mortgage and bills but i'm still able to make enough to pay everything now i'm feel comfortable i'm not overstressed if i'm working on crochet and i get real mad i can walk away if i'm at my real nine to five job or what i used to work my midnight shift job if I get mad, I just got to sit that out until the rest of my 12 hour shift is over. But at home, but another thing, downfall about being your own business, own boss. Yes, I can walk away and sit down, but I do find myself at 11 o'clock at night doing work. Or if I wake up at four o'clock in the morning, I'm like, well, if I'm up and can't sleep, I'm not going to waste my time. I'll put some work in then. So there are some ups and downs but i would never want to go back to a day job ever crochet has changed my life learning that skill at seven has made me a happier more stable person it's crazy just that let's see okay i'll take a couple more oh last one here we go and after this one, if guys, if you notice I'm talking too much and you want to hear about this crochet business, after this roundup, we'll talk a little more about this if you want to. And I might, she's my buddy. If I know where my phone is, I might be able to call Karen and get her on here to talk more about that. If not, make sure you check out the link below. But Elle says, I'm struggling with wanting to transition to pattern writing, selling, or just pumping out wholesale units to consignment shops. I do love the idea of getting a check in the mail. Yes. For, I'll just give you this for myself. For wholesale, I've never done it ever, but check out Karen. She's done that. She's even like sold stuff to celebrities. Amazing. You should check out her Instagram. But when I transition to online, that's my jam. Selling patterns or creating videos or having a blog is an excellent way to make passive income. The patterns that I wrote three years ago 
are still making monthly sales. They keep accruing. When I first started my Etsy shop, I had like 10 patterns. I wasn't making that much money. Now I have like 60, 70 patterns. So those $4.99 patterns that I have in there are accruing nice money every single month. And I don't have to work any extra bit to maintain that, if that makes sense. All right, so we're gonna hop back into this roundup. Don't worry if I'm talking too much and you want to get directly to this patterns. All those pattern links will be down in the description box below. Give me a second. I need to take a sip of wine. When I'm nervous a little bit, I tend to talk fast. Do you guys notice if I'm nervous online? It's where I try to ask my husband. We'll watch the video afterwards. I'm like, babe. Did I look all right online? Did it look like I stuttered too much? Was I too quiet? Did I talk too fast? It didn't seem like me. What do you guys see when you see me? I want that could be a question too. Answer that. No, that's that's very narcissistic. I'm a neurotic person. So no, don't answer that at all. I just go to the next question. The next question is, oh, you can ask me any question that you want. You can ask me or you can brag about what you're doing, what you're creating right now. Let me know down in the comments, but make sure you put question marks in front of it. It don't have to be anything fancy. Just question marks, so I know to bring it to the front. And if I miss your comment from earlier, just comment it again. I'm sorry I missed it. So we're gonna hop back into this roundup. Ooh, ooh, this next one is cute. Number eight. I call everything cute. I'm gonna start using a better um adjective for my words. My computer froze. Don't freeze on me. This is when I have to scroll a little bit. The pictures are so huge. Now look how cute. I'm going to scroll. Oh, I use cute again. Look how adorable. It's adorable. It has to be a cutesy woozy word. Okay, let me read what it is. How oh, it's in the word script I'm reading. How stinking cute is this fox pumpkin? This is such a creative pumpkin idea. And I, ooh, ooh, that was weird. You guys hear that? My computer made a weird noise. I don't think I'm having technical difficulties. Let me check back. <gasps> Am I frozen? Is everything still normal here? And I realized I didn't even have my microphone on. I hope you guys were able to hear me good. Everything's good? Okay. Let me hop back into it. I'm so sorry, guys. I should have a script like technical difficulties. Let me start over. How stinking cute is this Foch pumpkin? This is such a creative pumpkin I did. I think this would be, I think that is really cute what the designer pulled off. This beginner friendly pattern uses single crochet stitches in a back loop along with a tapestry crochet color changing technique. The designer of this pattern is Winding Road Crochet. I would have never thought to put a fox on a pumpkin. That is so unique and cute. next one this is the striped pumpkin black yarn provides a stark contrast to the variegated orange yarn called for in this next design that's what makes it so perfect for the classic black and orange halloween decorations the pattern calls for half double crochet and slip stitches there's even a mini crochet version for a keychain the designer of this pattern is k hook creations and the very last pattern is the Alpine Paths Pumpkins. These nicely nubby pumpkins are made by crocheting in the round. That means there's no sewing and no unsightly seams. The fantastic texture, uh, add. Where we are. The Van Texas texture is all thanks to the Alpine Stitch. The Alpine Stitch uses double crochet and post stitches to deliver a eye popping dimension. The designer of this pattern is Hooking with Eyeless. Here we go. Oh, oh, come on, computer, stop freezing. I don't know how any of you guys heard me because my microphone was not hooked up at all. It was like across the table. Mm. So what were we talking about? Oh, I said, you can ask me any question that you want. What's going on with your life? Brag about what you're making. Let me know down in the comments. Just make sure you put question marks in front of it so I can pull it to the front. I'm going to scroll up some. Uh, okay, I'm going to try your name. 
Santorcism, Santorcism, Santorcism. I don't know, but you, <laughs> which in your opinion is more profitable, selling patterns or actual products? Love your channel, by the way. Well, I don't, I've never sold hugely wholesale. Karen, we've talked behind the scenes. She's actually become one of my friends and she's told me what she's made one of her best years wholesale. And I would, it was more than I ever made at that point in time. But for myself, I was only small time. You know what I mean? I never hired anybody extra or anything like that. I directly went straight in the crochet uh, YouTube world. And luckily that worked for me. So for myself, that was more profitable for me. There we go. <laughs> oh, this is about me being uh, neurotic and always thinking craziness. No one ever, no, no, never. You look relaxed and in my, in your element. Thank you. I, that made me feel a little bit better. I, I said I'm an introvert. Luckily for me, this online thing, it was like an introvert's dream. I should create like a course called the introvert's guide to crochet for a crochet business. The in, ooh, that'd be a great title because I encounter so many introverts that want to make money in this. And I find online being the greatest thing. And I can even talk in public. I cannot talk to people like I'm talking to you right now. Online is different. Maybe because I'm around people who are like-minded, who likes crochet. I just can't go to the person on the street and just talk about crochet for half an hour. They'll think I'm nutty. But if I talk to you about crochet right now, we're at 36 minutes. You think it's normal. Hmm. Okay. Do, do, do. Cheryl's making her first hooded cow scarf. Ugh, cowl. Gloria, I'm working on a, I can't say it. V v I can't, you got, I hope you guys can read Poncho. I don't know, Miss Joy. Does anyone know if Baton's black tweet was discontinued? I love it and can't find it anywhere. I don't know. Oh, Virgie says she can hear me. All right. Okay, guys. And if you're just now getting to my live stream and you're wondering about where are the patterns? We made it through all of our pumpkin patterns, but if you want to crochet these free patterns for yourself, all these patterns are linked down in the description box below. So you don't have to look at me talk. But right now we're going to be talking back and forth. And remember, if you notice a little ticker going across the screen and you want to learn how to create uh, more sales for yourself or whatever like that, there's a free crochet business consultation with Karen V. Miguel. She has a crochet handmade cro handmade it's not crochet but it's the handmade success academy that's what it is she runs that i was a part of it i pay for the classes her links will be down in the description box below but leanne says busy with my uh first knitted sweater vintage bear top and a beanie and would like to start with two bags cardigan two bags with to start with a two bags, cardigans, Christmas gnome, and my first granny blanket. I think I'm going to make a granny blanket tutorial. It's nothing like creating a new pattern. Everybody, not everybody, not many people know the granny stitch. The beginners don't. Everybody loves a nice basic pattern. I think I'm going to do one of those tutorials. And plus, that's a tutorial where I can kind of take a break. I don't have to teach anything intricate. Let's see. Dude, dude. Hey! Speak of the devil, my friend Miss Karen. All right. I'm going to put her on the spot right now. Guys, in the comments, if you want to know, if you want to start asking about questions about crochet business, you can drill me and Karen right now. I can give you the tips from the blogger, pattern seller side, and she can give you the tips on the uh, handmade finish size. If you want to hear from her, guys, let me know in the comments. This is, she's one of my favorite people in the world. She's a genius. All right, there we go. 
Do, do, do. Not the in crochet. I like that. I've always kept to myself. So crochet and being in a crochet community works great for me also. It was the crochet community was the first place I ever felt. I don't know. No, ooh, is that a bug in my house or outside? Oh, this outside. I see it on my outside window. It's like this big with wings. I hope so. Where's my bug spray? Where's my husband? He left and went to the store. What was I just talking about? That bug scared me. Okay, where was that? Oh, be oh, she is here. Let me pull this down. Because we got some yes to Karen. Hey! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I got confused. I was watching you on YouTube and I'm like, oh, I'm logged on. And then I'm like, I have to get onto StreamYard. <laughs> yeah. And here I am. Yay. So this guys, so fun. we got the number one handmade success businesswoman. Any questions that you have right now? Hey, shoot it to us. We're, we don't get her here too often. I did an interview with you. What was it? How many months ago? Oh my gosh, wasn't that like a year ago? It just feels like so long ago. It yeah. was summer, I think, wasn't it? I think it was winter still, beginning of the year. Oh, I don't know. It's always so fun talking with you anyway. So it just feels like we've been friends forever. <laughs> okay. And guys, remember, make sure you put question marks in front so we know to bring you to the front. You see somebody you recognize? Yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm hopping on uh, and saying hi to uh xd symphony hey there yes i just i don't know where exactly to um i've never been on a stream and watch a stream at the same time so <laughs> it's kind of i'm like oh i should i'll comment on the youtube but then i'll look at the camera here so forgive me if it's like I'm, it seems like i'm like multitasking <laughs> That's right. I'm just saying hi to people, but Jan says, you are awesome. Love your crochet oh. tips and I've learned so much from you. Awesome sauce. Oh, thank you. Let's see. I Come on, guys. Hit us with some business stuff. We're ready. This, this is crochet season. October to December is where it's, oh, Divergent, she's on it. Oh, I saw this question in the, in the comments pop up about having pets and like odors. Mm -hmm. Did you answer that question already? No, but I'll read it out loud just in case anybody's listening. Can you sell handmade items if you smoke or have pets? What do you think, Karen? You, um, you my thoughts are it really depends on whether or not you think, of course, you could sell handmade items if you, string, if you smoke or have pets, but does the odor transfer to your items? That's the thing. If you, um, smoking is tough because it kind of seeps into other areas of your, like, place of business. So if you have like a studio, I'd say don't smoke in your studio, you mm -hmm. know, or if like your basement's in your, if your studio's in your basement and then don't let maybe your pets go in the area where your, where your stuff are, because it all just depends on whether or not it transfers onto the, the actual piece that you're making. So, I mean, truth is I do, I have a pet, <laughs> but all of my all of my business stuff on my crochet, wherever I work, is never on the same actual floor as my pet. Like, we don't let my dog onto the top floor of the house. And no one in our house um, smokes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. How about you? I have a good story for that one. I, somebody wants to heard you uh, sponsored by Kieran Simply Soft. About three years ago, I found uh it was two black garbage bags full of Kieran Simply Soft on sale. I think it was either uh, Craigslist or Facebook, but it came from a house of a smoker. Oh, so I was like, no, what? I got it for like fifty bucks. They had to be over like two hundred skeins of yarn. I was like, ah, oh, yeah. Yes. So all my earlier tutorials are Kieran Simply Soft because that's what I had. But I googled like, how do you get rid of this smell? Because it was like an intense smoker smell. What I had to do, I put a whole bunch of dryer sheets in a brand new garbage bag, wrapped it up, put it outside or in a garage someplace for a month, mm -hmm. took it out, did it again for a month. <laughs> and eventually just, I don't know how it happened. It didn't smell anymore, but oh, I who has time to do that with a finished item two months ago. Yeah, because a lot of the times, there are times where... Um, 
uh, the here's a here's a tip if you are if you do smoke or cook a lot or have pets or odors in your house it also depends on what kind of fat like um fiber you choose to use i find that cottons and acrylics absorb a lot of scent but if you use 100 pure wools alpacas like hair type um fibers the odor dissipates out of them almost instantly like i have a crocheter who cooks a lot and then sometimes when i pick up from her i'm like uh oh but literally <laughs> if i let if i put the hats out 24 hours later it's gone like wool and alpaca doesn't tend to absorb over odor as, and hold it as as much that's another reason why like a lot of athletes like using like merino and alpaca because it doesn't absorb the odor even when they're sweating and working out in the garment it doesn't stink oh i'm just typing something sorry this yeah question well, i don't have to type but i can say it oh yeah guys if you want ask your business question now i seen somebody else had one it was miss joy what method do you use to grade and size your wearable designs? Do you use a formula in Excel? Okay. You, you got it? Oh, okay. Let's both uh, give our take on it. But okay. um, basically, like, honestly, one of the, this is a strategic move when, you, when you're building a business is also thinking about what you want to make. And a lot of the things that I do make are not really sizable. Like they're either one size fits all, like hats, or I'll have a small, large or there is options on certain styles that I allow sizing, but fortunately I don't make fitted things. Like um, that's one of the reasons I don't sell, uh, some of you are like bikini uh, swimsuit specialists. Ooh, sort of yeah. If you are gonna sell that, like specialize in that. And basically you can find um, resources like fashion resources that have the standard sizing for like A cup, B cup, C cup, D cup or whatever, and use that, then you have to kind of play around with it. You may even need to get like a bodice to kind of figure it out and then just use your standard sizing. Then when you, and stick with a, like this is where sourcing is important. And if you're curious about sourcing and finding good people to source from, you have to kind of plan what materials you want to use and then stick with that so that your gauge doesn't change. Because this is one thing I learned very early was when I went to a trade show with one of, um, I went to a trade show by myself. It was actually magic in Las Vegas. And I was looking at like the different fashion stuff. And then I met somebody who was trying to like sell me yarn. And then she was asking how I do it. And we were talking about crocheters and she's the first person put it in my head about specs. Like you need to make sure that your specs, she's like, how do you control your specs? And then right then I was just like, specs? <laughs> you know? but, them. Right. <laughs> Luckily my specs don't change that much because my hats generally will measure approximately like, you know, like when a you half inch to your head. Yeah. Right. Right. Most people have a 20 to 24 head. If it's any bigger than that, you make a custom hat or make yeah. a large hat, right? Mm -hmm. But then um, in terms of specs, you have to make sure that your crocheters or whoever is knitting or crocheting for you have the same specs as you do. So it's easier if you don't change the materials that you're using because you can count on the specs always being the same. And also you increase the efficiency of your business. Yeah. See, I'll take it down to the basic kindergarten because I'm not as... You're great with this. When I'm making wearables like you, I'll stuck to hats. I stuck to gloves. If for my creating crochet patterns, you have to give good sizable sizes. I go to the craft yarn council. They have the typical sizes. How long would a large be? How many inches this way? How many craft yarn council? Everything for crocheters and knitting. You can get the standard sizing from there. So if somebody says, what size is this? I just always send them that chart from the craft yarn council. Like this is how I base all of my measurements. This is a small based on this or right. Makes sense? And also I was going to say joy for joy Parker's question too. Um, did you tell them about your, your book? Sorry, am I spilling the ble the beans? What? <laughs> did, is this a star amongst us? <laughs> No, your book. My Alina. book. Right? Yeah. Because oh. she's oh. asking, do I use a formula in Excel? Now, it really depends on verbal oh. designs, but this is the point oh. where I would use something like your book, Alicia, because I have a book, sim like mine's just a scrapbook. Oh. Like, but I, I would use a crochet version. I didn't link it down below. I yeah. also, this is for the knitters. 
sugar honey iced tea, I want to knit, but crochet one as this, you know, sugar honey iced tea, I want to crochet. I have these for sale on um, Amazon. You're a great plug. Wow. <laughs> but this is what I would use. Like I have a book that I keep myself that I would, I literally, one side has all the measurements, the gauges I used, which yarn yeah. I used, one ply or two ply, and then a sketched out version with lines of how wide certain things are. And after I sketch out the garment, then I, oh, I never, never, I keep every single pattern that I, that is in my line in the same book. And literally to this day, I am still using it. Now my book is falling apart and I have to slide it into like plastic, but uh -huh. like I've got, I've got my, um, so do I use Excel? I don't use Excel because I'm a sketcher. I like to sketch things. You have to get this. Guys, I don't have the link down below, but if you type this word, but not the I, but the asterisk, because Amazon was going to beat my butt for having a real word. Yes. You can find a crochet version of this. It's upstairs in my bedroom getting put to work. But yeah. That's what I would say. Use a book like that, like your book, Alicia, uh, or Joy, and um, cool beans, she said. So <laughs> cool. So that's what I would, that's exactly what I do. I don't use Excel. I don't use a multiplier for sizing yeah. because women's bodies are different. And uh, and even like with ponchos, like you're also looking at shoulder widths. I'm a broad, short person. So my, my shoulders are kind of funky. So it's never <laughs> an exact... <laughs> It's never you have awesome shoulders. You have awesome shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so yeah, that's what I would do. Okay. Oh, uh, my friend L. What's a solid selling platform for eShops or should I focus on purchasing my yarn or site domain? It's been a hit or miss for years, but I've gained consistent flow from eBay, but no human support. That's hmm. awesome. So, it, okay, so I honestly, like way back in the day, um, I used to sell on eBay too, but not my crochet. My sister used to give me a lot of beauty products, but I don't use a lot of beauty products. I just use what I like, like oil of Olay or whatever. Yeah. I used to... <laughs> I used to sell. I hope she's not watching this. But some of the stuff she gave me, I would sell on eBay. <laughs> I would never use it. It's such a waste, right? But eBay is a fantastic place to um to start building your clientele. Whether you start on eBay, Etsy, um, Amazon, these are great platforms because you're already getting traffic. Like the the site will create traffic, but of course, the natural drawbacks are that you have natural competition but it's a great way to build your customer base. So that's what I did. Whether you're selling on eBay, Etsy or whatever, build your customer base first. But I am a huge advocate of Shopify once you have your own yeah. base. And then because um, then you can drive traffic to it wherever you want, because eventually you'll probably find that once you're on eBay, Etsy, Amazon or wherever you're selling right now, Facebook, catalog, yeah. Instagram, eventually once people start buying from you, you're going to be able to start collecting customer information, emails, their profile, their DMs, right. And then once you start compiling those things, you can create regular, consistent resales. Like I just had a flash sale right now and I was filling my orders right now, but like, these are like thousands of my previous customers who are just adding to their collection. Yeah. So that's, um, a solid selling platform. I personally recommend Shopify. If you haven't seen my site, I do have a how to get started on Shopify and you're welcome to give it a try. Um, there, and I even have a video where you can set it up your first Shopify site. So give it a try. I mean, if you like it, great. But it sounds like if you're on eBay, the great thing about eBay too is you have people's email addresses after you complete the transaction. Oh. So gather their email addresses of the sales you've already created and then start um, start creating newsletters for those people and then marketing to people similar to the people that you've already sold to on eBay or Etsy or wherever yeah. else you sell. Okay. Oh, guys, I'll stop. I would also like to mention, if you're just now getting to the live stream and you see like, where are these crochet pumpkin patterns? We made it through all the pumpkin patterns, but don't worry, all these are listed down below. I brought in one of my favorite people, Karen. We started talking about crochet business somehow. This is one of my favorite topics to talk about, crochet money. Oh, I shake. <laughs> so if you have any questions for Karen right now, please, or myself, but she's the pro, 
put question You're... marks in front of it so we can bring it to the front. And also, one more thing I'm going to keep saying also, you can click down in the link in the description box below. If you want to figure out, is this crochet business the next thing I want to step I want to take in my life? How about a free consultation and find out and maybe this class will be for you. All that information will be linked down below. All right, let's hop into the next one. Mar Did I get Maria? No. Maria says, I've started using your prices scheme of hourly plus cost of yarn, and it's working great. It's more than I was charging previously, and folks seem to be fine with it. Thanks for the recommendation. I think we both recommended that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I And you could also charge by yardage once you get the idea of how much, how long it takes people to make. No, probably Maria for you. Maria has been at this crochet or craft business for a while. You've built up a clientele. People expect to pay more from you now. It's not like this is your very first shop, the very first item you have. You're a business. So they ex they're going to pay more. So congratulations to you. Well done, Maria. My buddy, Gloria. What are the best crochet items to sell for your business? I have a business and I sell a lot of afghans and hat sets, but trying to get out of the afghans take up too much time. Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay. For like a couple things for Gloria that I would mention is uh, afghans taking too much time. This might be the time if you're getting steady flow of customers that you might want to consider bringing in somebody to help you with the Afghans since those are so time consuming. Yeah, because if you can, like one of the first things I offloaded once I finally found crocheters that crochet like me is the hats that take the longest, because at least I can... I, can, I was able to offload it from them when they were ready for me to pick it up from them. Then I would just pick it up and then and then I could keep running the business and making like other things or trying new designs and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So consider getting someone to help you with the designs that are really time consuming and then considering paying them. Here's a trip. Take a trick. Uh, excuse me. Trick that. I Well, not trick, but like a tip is try paying them by yardage instead of hour if you hire fast crocheters because they can crochet at any time of the day if they want and then if you know your afghan takes like five times the amount as a hat or ten times then you would kind of charge you would pay them about ten times as much for the afghan but you would also charge appropriately right and then mm -hmm. in terms of what to sell it really depends on what you want to one make two who your niche is and if you don't know who your niche is i've decided to do a live workshop on that on this coming thursday on my Ooh. channel if you want to check it out so like niching for your business you have to know who your niche is and then three um what do you uh what's in season like you're not trying to sell like a chunky alpaca toques in the middle of july you know what i mean <laughs> So always keep in mind what is the most appropriate thing to sell for the season and yeah. what in that kind of group of se like in this within those seasons do you like making like mm -hmm. um I know like I don't love making sweaters for other people. I like making them occasionally for myself, but I wouldn't add it to my line because I don't love making it making yeah. a lot of them. You know what I mean? So I don't is it the best thing to sell? They sell great, but they're they take forever to make. So I don't mm -hmm. I don't add those to my collection. See, that's when I was crocheting and selling my hat hats. I was known as the hat girl. And luckily I had a hope I made so many. I had such a huge collection of pictures of hats. I was able to like, but I wish, I wish I would have turned that part of little John Yarns and I wanted to, but I didn't understand. I didn't have you three years ago. <laughs> It's never too late. This is what's great about like your class. Your class will take you from like this beginning, from the foundations of crochet, of beginning your niece into niche, into outsourcing, into wholesale, and finding how to do a, a funnel and finding your audience and how to convert those audiences into sales and most importantly, automate it. Yeah. That's what I learned from your class. Automate that. Mm -hmm. And then the sales just start coming in, honestly. Yeah, it's, when I figured that out for myself, it was like, <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> like not even kidding. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> oh, this is what about stinky uh, yarn. Knit pearl and squirrel with Granny Dale Thompson. That's a lot. 
<laughs> I've heard before to put dryer sheets in with the odorous yarn and put it in the freezer. Also, ooh, I guess that's good to do in case there's cooties. Maybe that's what he <laughs> told me. Do you make me laugh, <laughs> cooties? I guess that's why they told me to put it outside. It was cold then. Oh, smart. Oh, that that's great. I don't buy dryer sheets. We always use fab liquid fabric softener. <laughs> See, wait, wait. I'm gonna get back to you, David. Liquid fabric, so liquid fabric softener. Don't you have to put that in like in the middle of like your? How's that work? I don't do most it. I never machines, use it. May, most machines now, if you put I it, I don't in, use that space. Well, it'll release it in the middle. You don't have to run down and do it. It doesn't. There's, do it. A, there's a space in mine. I don't. I never use it. <laughs> this is how I'm 41 years old almost. Okay, there's the soap. There's the bleach spot and there's this extra spot. Is that where it go? I'm pretty and sure. Like, it, yeah. And I'm pretty sure it releases it for you. So you don't have to wait by, oh my gosh, that must be the worst. Who this, I, I'm thinking of stuff for, I remember back in 1990. This is why my mom's like, I didn't do it. Cause I'm not going to, maybe this is why it's stuck in my head. I'm like, I don't. What I do, I'm addicted to gang. Oh, we're off topic. This, oh, let me, no, it's okay. I'm addicted to gain. I love oh gain soap. It smells so good. Yes. So I get the gain and I get the little sprinkles, the smell sprinkles. And then I take the dryer sheets afterwards and put like five of them in the dryer. So it's just like. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I got to get more of these dryer sheets because I, yeah, I tend to use. Uh, the you're classy. That's why you're a classy lady. No, no. But the thing is, I hang dry my stuff. So the things, some things I hang dry don't end up with the extra scent. So, you know, but oh, you we don't. Hang dry. You're such a, you're a good woman. You hang dry your clothes too. Yeah, I do. I do. Because I like to keep them nice and tidy, you know, and then I steam them before I wear them if I need to. Okay. No, I'm going to get to David. I got to say this. Somebody David. asked me, what is it like to be a grown up? Laundry. That is what grown up hood for me is laundry. You steam yours. Mine is laundry and wrinkled clothes and the last basket of wrinkled clothes that just stays there in a basket. That's adulthood. Uh, those are, that's my Monday chore. I always like get rid of the baskets. So that the like that's one of the things I always do Mondays, the <laughs> basket because you know you get loads done during the weekend and then you get these baskets around like we get our baskets of clean clothes lying around like the hallway in front of the kids room on the floor of the master room. and then on Monday I get rid of all the baskets so I get rid of all the baskets and I just fold and I watch like or listen to an audio book or I watch a movie in my room mm -hmm. and I fold fold fold. That's I'm happy. Monday. I no longer have to, my daughter's gone. I stopped folding her clothes when she was like 12 or 11. Now my son, he's 10, he folds his own clothes. So now I just have to fold my husband. That's my last one. Okay, I'm sorry, Dave. no. I should make him fold his own too. And yours. <laughs> and mine. I, know, I fold them all nice. I put clothes instead of flat in the drawer. I put t-shirts up this way. You're a good person. You're a good person. <laughs> Okay, David, I'm sorry. My question referred to pattern sales. I need to make it grow. Okay, I guess I can help you with that way. Pattern sales, if you're just on Etsy, you need to load up. There are three big major pattern selling sites. There is Rivalry, did I say it? Uh, Etsy and what is it? Love Knitting, Lovecraft Knitting. Is that what it's called? Do you know it? I don't sell many patterns. <laughs> yeah. Well, I didn't know if you knew the set, but it's those are three sites. Put them on all three of those sites. And what you have to do is promote that beautiful picture that you made. Put it on Instagram and say, hey, free pattern link in bio. Put it all over your Facebook business page. Post it. Post. Okay. This is what I've been doing for the past, what is it, years. I post, I'm in part of 60 Facebook pattern groups. This is for pattern sellers. I post to five pattern Facebook groups a day, five a day. Yeah, that's what you have to do. That's the only way to promote it. 
Instagram, Facebook, just promote. You can't expect to be found on Etsy or Ravelry. Unfortunately, even if you do the best SEO research on Etsy, there's so many other crocheters. You're just not going to be found. You just have to let the algorithm know like, hey, it gets cues like people from Facebook keeps coming to their Etsy shop. Maybe this is a hint to the Etsy algorithm to start promoting you to them more. If that makes sense? Mm -hmm. Does that, yes. Is that clearly? Now, David, I'm wondering, do you know if David, is, is it his full-time business to sell patterns? I don't know. David, is it? I'll scroll down eventually. Is this your full-time job? I know she has amazing patterns. I've been on his Instagram. I wish nice. I was signed in. I'm not signed in. But let us know. We'll okay. move on. Ooh. Because... Do you mind oh, if we oh go ahead? Yeah, yeah. Like, no, I was just gonna say to David, like, I know, I know the feeling of what you're telling, like what Alicia's saying. Like, she's saying, Oh, you gotta put po like post on these things. And to me, I I've been a mostly product seller. So when I'm when I'm promoting my patterns and I've taken Alicia's advice, my heart is like, oh my god, more work, right? <laughs> I just recently uh took on a, un, or like they take, you can take on student, like college or university students in marketing who are interested in learning how to be like, how to gain, gain experience through internships. So if you were to approach like a college student looking for an internship or even post at a on a student board at local colleges for marketing programs, they're looking for experience. And then sometimes all you have to do is just pay them a stipend, like at the end of the month to help you on a monthly basis. Consider that because we used to do this when I used to work for the school board. And now I do this now I hire um, people to help me keep track of where I need to post and then help me with my postings and that sort of thing. David, listen to her. She's a genius. I wish I would have taught. I pay my VA a good bit of money a month and she got herself an intern. <laughs> well, sometimes it comes, I I've, in. <laughs> I've had interns that like, it's funny, the interns I have usually approach me because they find out I'm in like kind of fashion and hand making. And then they offer to work for free. And then I'm like, I can't, I can't just take your free. I got to pay you. So I'll offer them a stipend. Right. Uh -huh. But a lot of the time, I mean, we're coming out of COVID. A lot of people are like, all in. Mad. don't defend it. I know. You're awesome. Do <laughs> not defend that. You're a genius. Oh, thanks. <laughs> okay. uh, when you said gauge, are we talking about crochet? Yes. You're probably talking about crochet gauge. Some people don't know what it is. Do you, would you want to elaborate like on it? What's the question? Like yeah, I think gauge. it's just like gauge. I don't know. Uh, well, I, maybe there's a previous question to it. Like, let's see, Jewel. Joy, 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 joy. What question method? Was... Oh, wait. That was that we did that great to size wearable designs. Oh, like, okay. No, I think we answered it when we were talking about keeping yeah. track in the book. And then it depends on sizing of what you're making. Hats you don't need so much. Bikinis would be something you really, really have to size. Me what method do you use? Oh, how do you go about learning? Yeah, read it out loud. So just in case people. Oh, sorry. Reading. How do you go about learning to do pattern for selling? I want to also sell hand dyed yarns as well. This might be you to start. Okay, learning how to create a pattern. There's actually classes out there. I can't give you any specific ones because I didn't take any classes. I just took what was already online. I, when I first started YouTube, I didn't create any written patterns because I didn't know how to write it. What I did, I followed, like I, I sorry for saying like so much. I followed YouTubers who had a written pattern and a video tutorial. And you can find your way how to write one. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. Actually, fall along to mine because all my uh, video tutorials come with a written pattern. And you'll be able to see how I write mine and how I speak it. Because yes. crochet written patterns, it's not as difficult as you think. No. So uh, let's say if you want two single crochets in the first stitch followed by four single crochets, what you would write is 2SC, that stands for two single crochets, then a comma, SC in the next four stitches. You just have to learn abbreviations. Mm -hmm. And then how to say, like, I always wondered because you know how I learned how to write patterns? I, I would write patterns based on how I learned them before. Yes. And then 
there were certain like pattern writers. I like their style of writing. Some I don't. Yes. And some I'm like, I'm then, and then there are some graphs that I, per, sometimes I prefer learning from a graph rather than reading it. Yeah. But um, I always wondered if there was a standard way of writing it, but based on what I would learn from they're like, yeah, SC, the abbreviations are thing are are consistent. As long as you use the same consistent terms throughout your your pattern, yeah. then that's the way it is. But I've actually never is there like a yarn council saying that comma means and then? I don't know. That's just how I assume it's written. Like comma me like comma means like and then the next thing you do is that's what yeah. a comma means. And then four single crochets in the next four. Like you would just write it out like that. But I'd say like write it out the way that you understand it if you're not sure. And then um also you could also there are people who can critique your pattern and then help you That's write it out. Taught me complete because I wrote how I spoke. If mm -hmm. that makes sense. Oh Single me too. crochet in the next two stitches, comma, double crochet in the next, comma. I but once I start sending my patterns to pattern testers, those are the women and men who taught me how to crochet They're like this don't make sense. Uh -huh. Write it differently. So pattern testers. <laughs> yeah. And the thing too is I, I've been crocheting for ages. And back when I was crocheting, like when I was in like the early 90s, I didn't I didn't pattern test. Like I got a couple people who I knew how to crochet to check it out. How did you find a pattern tester back in the 90s? It, there was no such thing. It was just like, hey, I wrote this pattern. Can you see if it sucks? <laughs> like oh, and guys, by the way, even though Karen and myself look 22. We're actually 75. <laughs> <laughs> we just look that great. <laughs> okay, where are we? Okay. Uh, David says, tutorials are not my long suit, but I've been fortunate enough to have famous YouTubers do tutorials based on my patterns. Hey, you got some patterns? I want some. David. Okay. We're divorced. We're divorced David, David, drop your Instagram into the chat. I've got to check it out. Hold on. I'm not signed in on my computer, so I can't show you his. Is it under David Browning? Uh, David, I believe so. David. I can't spell right now. Where are you, David? Actually, David, right now, leave it in the comments so I can just click the link. Can you give us your Instagram link, please, so we don't have to search? We're working hard. And not sharing your patterns with me. I'm oh, here it is, David. Bearded yarn dudes. Okay, I just followed you. Very cool. Oh, wait, David. Yarn. We're going to go on a field trip as soon as I find him. Here we go. That's not my David. That's not my David. Who's this David? I don't know that guy. Bearded yarn dudes. I can't. Here it is, the bearded yarn dude. Bearded yarn dude. Bearded yarn dude. Oh, by the way, I'm gonna drop in the comments your your book. Oh, thank you. Nisha's book. Is this my? <gasps> what happened to your eye, David? Jesus. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me put the screen share. <laughs> screen this share. Is at I just dropped in the con. Oh my goodness. Poor David. I should be looking at yarn. Oh God. Yeah. Who did this to you? Who do we have to fight? This we'll fight. The violent you. double crochet. <laughs> <laughs> Who attacked my David? Jeez, your doggy's so cute. Your pup. Oh, you have beautiful work. Okay. What were we talking about? I'm sorry. I got lost by David. How dare you, David? Now we now we see David's work. Beautiful. Okay. Oh, I love that shawl. That polar. A bit really of cute. a fall, David. That sounds like who been beating you up, David? <laughs> I've heard that. You had a bit of a fall. Oh. Um, it was a cocker spaniel. Okay. That's that's your fault then. <laughs> you must have deserved it. That will allow you to oh. chart your pattern. Oh, 
Oh, and guys, by the way, if you're just now making it to this live stream and you're wondering where are these crochet patterns, I've made it through this whole entire live stream about the patterns, but you can click down in the description box below and go directly to all these patterns. But somehow we got into Karen, what well, you're over here. Karen popped on. Oh, I popped on. I'm, I'm guessing. You're I'm guessing. guessing on the show. Yeah. So if you want to know about how to create your own crochet business, how to make money, how to just make money with crochet right now, ask questions. And also, if you want some th more thorough information about that down below, you can get a free crochet business consultation with Karen. The link is down in the description box below. So please don't miss on that. Click it. It's click it. It's free, free, free. I like it. Okay. I know. <laughs> Okay, where are we at? Oh, Kim. Kim says, thank you for answering my question. I'll send you some hard dry, <laughs> some hand dry yarn when I'm on my roll with my business. <laughs> awesome. Hmm. Cheers. More to be continued about the Cocker Spaniel. We just adopted the Cocker Spaniel recently, but he what, but he's about 11 years old. Oh, rescue pup. Oh, that's so sweet. Okay, one more. Oh, and remember, guys, if you have any questions about crochet business, we're going to be wrapping this up in a little bit. Right now, put question marks. Actually, you don't even have to put question marks. Just ask directly. We're going to see it. Where are the two women to ask? I'm great with helping with learning how to make money online. Well, Ashley, we're both great with my money online. <laughs> I'm great with blogging, pattern writing, YouTube. If you're making handmade sales directly, this girl, she's for oh, you. Thanks. All right, Joy, how long would you say it took each of you to be able to quit your nine to five? I'll go first. Oh, yeah. I quit last year, uh, November of 2020. I didn't have a teacher. I didn't have a class. I started in uh, selling my items in the fall of 2015. So 2015 till 2020, the end of that. So what's that? Five years? Five years. Ooh. But this is through no help at all. I didn't take any online classes, handmade help. I just had to figure this all out on my own. If I had a teacher to step me through these processes, that's why I love to give information freely. Check my blog, my income reports. You can look at that. I'll spill it out freely. But luckily, thanks to Karen, I took one of my first classes after five years of doing this on my own. I took one of my first classes uh, back in early spring with Karen and it has increased my sales. I wish, I wish I had that in the beginning. I felt weird because people are like, you're a YouTuber. You should know this stuff. I'm like, mm -mm, nobody taught me. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Karen, for teaching oh, thank me. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. And you've taught me so much too, like even in terms of like YouTube analytics and things like that. And like, I write patterns, but I don't write them to publish that much. Uh, because I'm busy with my like accessories company, but um, and and YouTube, but uh, like in terms of like creating patterns, I have a better idea of how to like promote them on Facebook and engage in the, in Pinterest. I'm kind of getting yeah. more accustomed to doing that too. But for me, I mean, I've been crocheting since I was a kid, just like you. I didn't when really did try you, starting you to, to quit though. Quit, quit. Okay, quit. so I opened my Etsy shop December of 2013. And then I was like selling friends and family. Then I started selling, getting sales from the public, just regular stuff, you know, Facebook tweeting things out. And then, but then I got a break where my, my items kind of got picked up by Hollywood and, and then I, they ended up on a what, lot of celebrities. What award ceremony did you go to? I went to the Golden Globes. <laughs> I was, I, I got to the, the Golden Globes with her yeah. crochet. So I got to gift nominees and presenters with my luxury hats and that's when it took off. And from there, like it blew up, but I didn't quit my job because I didn't, I never thought it would be a full-time thing. So, to, so all of two, all 2014, but then I found out my husband had a tumor at like yeah. at the end of 2014. So 2015, at the end of 2015, literally December, 2015, 
I quit because mm-hmm. I had, um, I had already at that point, like once my business took off, then I was like, okay, I got the online portion of it and I hit my targets right away. Yeah. Like that's why it's funny when you say like, don't set your goals too low because my goals were literally, it's the only time I can remember where my goals were too low because <laughs> I hit it so fast. I wasn't quite sure where to go next. And then I'm like, okay, I'll set it on like distribution, wholesale, and then national wholesale if possible, and maybe international. And then things happen where if you kind of put it out there, it comes to you. There was an international distribution company. They sell Blundstones, you know, Blundstone France, you know, the company that sells those shoes, they're like boots, Blundstones. Okay. The Blundstone France distributor wanted to sell my hats in Europe. So I was like, okay, so I sent my hats to Europe and then they distributed my hats for me. So they ended up like in Switzerland and stuff. And then I got like, I pitched the shopping channel, ended up in shopping channel. This was on top of getting boutiques. So this is how the business grew. So I quit 2015. Once I got my first, I only had probably about, I had my first three boutiques already from just door knocking one I got through a co-worker friend of mine another yeah. I got from a referral I had dinner with and another I got because it was in town and I was shopping and I'm like hey you want to carry I, my hat can I cut you the way you say things sounds so professional the way Karen gets these connections one is because of her genius personality and con- <laughs> she's normal she is not this like, oh, I just know. Can you tell me about the hat you just had in your purse to give away to a celebrity? Oh, yeah. Okay. This okay. This is what she does. This is <laughs> how she gets these connections. Okay. So another thing is like, Alicia's right. Like, I I didn't, I never was in retail before. So I was like, okay, I've always been in like call center sales. I used to sell cell phones like when I was a, in my 20s. But anyway, I'm like, okay, now that I'm in this fashion industry, how do you sell fashion? I haven't even worked retail. Like I used to work at Orange Julius. Do they have that where they make milkshakes? <laughs> anyway, so, so, they, so I was like, okay, I need to get like retail experience fast. So I joined Fashion Group International Toronto. And it's where all the like, you know, schmoozy design students from like OCAD and like all the graduates get their internships with like Christian Dior and all of this stuff. And like, I'm like, I'm going to go there because there'll be other people who know how to sell clothes. Right. Yeah. And so I went and they were like, Whoa, like entertainment tonight correspondents was sitting on my table. Right. And then her, it was like Cheryl Hickey from ET. And then her stylist was at the table. The VP of Christian Dior was at the table. I'm like, damn, I'm at a good table. <laughs> okay. And I'm like, there is no way. Uh, one thing in my head is like, there's no way opportunity will be in my lap and I'm not going to capitalize it. Even if I make a freaking fool out of myself. Like I just learned this from Hollywood. I didn't like, I'm like some crochet person's going to go to Hollywood. I'm going to make a fool out of myself, but I might as well try. Right. Because what well. else do I have to go? like, I'm going to, I'm taking the flight there anyway. You might as well just do your best. So when I went to this dinner in Toronto at this fashion group international, the, there was a lady who was on entertainment tonight and I'm like, Oh my gosh, she's there. So it was ET Canada host. Right. And so I like literally before I went to the dinner, I grabbed my most expensive hat. It's called the Bijou floral. It's got crystals like (laughs) sewn into the side of the hat and the matching scarf. And I just shoved them in my bag, my dinner bag. And I'm like, if there's anyone worth talking to who can like, help me out, then I'm going to give them hats. Right. Yeah. So I went there and uh, she was at my table and then she was like, well, let's see whoever, who else is at the table. I'm like, and when it got to my turn, I was like, hi, my name is Karen Valoria. I'm um, owner and founder of a handmade luxury hat and accessories luxury. company. And I brought this hat for you and I pulled it out of my purse and everyone at the table was like, what the heck? <laughs> who does that? But then her stylist was like, props like props for being prepared and then yes. yeah and then and I'm like oh and I have a matching scarf that goes with it and she's like wow thank you and I was like here here you go and since I follow her I knew her daughter 
had like was like seven years old so I gave her like a pom-pom hat and then I don't know if you guys know her but like Jessica Mulrooney was also at this dinner she's like good friends with Meghan Markle and I'm like if she has any like if she has any real close relationships with like Meghan Markle then maybe either Jessica can wear this or she can so I just I beelined it after dinner to Jessica's table and then I was like hi um can we take a selfie <laughs> and then I <laughs> gave her a red hat and then she was like she was super gracious and everything that hat didn't end up in any pictures or anything but I got like shout outs from Cheryl and my hats in on like entertainment tonight and I've given my hats to like newscasters uh -huh. So when they're doing broadcasts, I have actually my YouTube channel, like one of my really early, early posts is a picture of my my friend Zuraida from CTV News. And she's doing a post about a burglary or whatever. And she's wearing one mm -hmm. of my newsboy caps. So just be ready. Go everywhere with something in your bag. See, that's what I like about you. You're Sometimes people are like, this is not attainable. I cannot do what you did. Karen is a regular girl, a regular person that got laundry, that got kids, that got a husband, that got dinner to make later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Maria says, OMG, ladies, I want to go have coffee with you or wine, cocktails. I'm flexible. This has been the best live stream ever. Oh, this is fun. I love that. I didn't bring my drink. I should, but I'm sorry. I, it was on, you know, I'm yeah. kind of like, I told Karen, I'm like, be ready. If we end up talking about business, I want to bring you on. Just be ready just in case. Yeah. Sure. It's fun. Oh, I I put, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't see the link for the class. Um, I put it down. It's in the description box, but just in case about two minutes ago, I put it down in the chat. I'll chat it again. There we go. And this Thursday, I'll be doing a live workshop for like building your business. And then, of course, afterwards, if you want to chat with me live, you can book a call, too. So come at like a, watch along with me Thursday because I'm going to be oh, covering the class, not the class. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, the workshop will be I literally I just put it up before I logged on. <laughs> so the live is already set a reminder for the live on my channel. Uh, they are Karen V. Miguel. So you can set the live for this coming Thursday. And I'm teaching how to um, specify your niche so you can figure out what specific things to make and then how to appeal to your audience and be ready. But it's a bigger thing. But like literally, if you can at least start with this, it's this, this is the beginning of making sure that you really, you know, you target business and then you make the wisest choices for your business. Because once you kind of, it's almost like having values of what you will and won't let your kids be allowed to do <laughs> yeah you know what i mean once you have those boundaries it's so easy to make business decisions that's what you have to do for your business you have to like kind of set the niche set the boundaries create the values for your business and then you can build everything around that whether you're selling placemats hats or bikinis it just depends what you what it is that you want to sell Oh, and I always put this in every 10 minutes. If you're just now getting to this live stream, because I see the numbers going up on my end. I Hey, Karen, by the way, my views have gone up since you showed up on my channel. Oh, wow. Was, yeah, since you showed up, the views have gone up. If you're just now getting to this live stream and you're wondering where are the pumpkin patterns, we're done with that. All the pumpkin patterns are linked down in the description box below. You can go directly to it. Somehow we got into this amazing business crochet conversation. So it's the crochet season. If you want to learn how to make money in this crochet business, I got can't wait. Karen over here, she's going to talk through it. She's also offering free business consultations. Those links will be down below. She has a wonderful class, Handmade Success Academy. Yeah. That's, it's almost like a tongue. Wait, I'll, remember, I can't say that word. I always mess up that word. Remember Handmailed. 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 Handmailed Success Academy. But like, it's honestly, thank you for having me because like, my family is sick of me talking about business because like I will talk to anyone who wants to talk about their business because I just I love it. I love, 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 love it because yes. it's the creative side of business. And I just you guys are creative people, but I just love bringing the creative side because business creativity is fun. That's why marketing is so fun. 
Like, yes. yeah, my dad wanted me to be computer programmer and I'd rather stick a pin in my eye because <laughs> I was like, the consolation was that I had, I got a business degree, but like, I yeah. could not become a programmer. So I was set, like, I decided on business cause it's creative. Yeah. Yeah. But um, did you find it worth it, your time to do shows to sell finished project? Can I tell you, I don't, yes, yes. Like, um, okay, if you're talking about wholesale shows, if you're looking for wholesale, that is in itself a totally different ball game because uh, just as a caveat, you really need to know your pricing, your wholesale, and it can be lucrative if you already have scaled to the point where you have people helping you and you can produce at a large portion. Do you find it helpful to sell it finished project that shows? I before COVID, I made probably half my revenue at sale at shows. I'm not even kidding. Like the crowd, like there are ways to choose shows that are most lucrative. And um, and I I we cover some of this too in my course too, but um, you you have to look at you have to do your research. If you don't do your research, and even Alicia is a big advocate of that, check your analytics, right? Yes. I'm like I am totally not a numbers person either, but you like if you gotta if you want to get big at, good at the big stuff, you gotta do the little stuff too, which is like checking numbers. When there's a show that's like, hey, have a craft show over here, and you're like, what, five hundred dollars for a table? Ask them for their deck. What are their demographics? If they're bringing in like 50,000 people in a demographic area where the per capita income is 100,000 per household, yeah, pay $500 for that show. You'll probably net four grand. Like, you know, if, and then, and then figure out, okay, if each of my products is $50 each, how much does it cost to net four grand? So divide your that amount of how many items you're going to need to make with you. So say you were to do that really, really super quick. Let me just do that. So say oh, you wow, wanted to make this to me all the time. She says like, Alicia, you just this. do this. You only need to bring 80, 80, $50 hats with you to the, like, you only need to sell 80, $50 hats at that show to make four grand. You've already broke even after you've sold uh, 10 hats, right? So like you, you've paid for your booth. So it's worth it sometimes to pay $500 for a show. Like now the shows aren't working, but you got to keep this in mind when shows start opening up, read the deck for their demographics. If they don't have a deck, look at the geographic area or walk the show before you've done it, before you do the show and waste your money on the show fee, because you also want to see, and then I don't mean to be like pretentious or whatever, but like if, for example, like someone told me, Karen, you got to do the Toronto Cabbage Town Festival show. So I'm like, I don't know anything about this show. So I get, I go there. It's Toronto, cute part of Toronto. Houses are a million dollars each. Everyone's wearing like leather boots, Louis Vuitton bags, like Michael Kors and like, okay. And you know, and they've got their jackets on. I'm like, what kind of jackets are they wearing? They're wearing full leather. They're wearing macage, Nobu, Canada Goose. I'm like, okay. I know my brand hangs with these things. These shoppers are shopping here. Yes, this would be a good show for me to attend. Is the traffic fat? Like, is there enough traffic here? Could I make it enough in, enough in a weekend where I'm making up $250? Then you go talk to other knit designers. So how are sales today? They're like, oh my God, it's amazing or whatever. Or you look how busy the booths are. Is there Are there like five people at the table thumbing through their table? you know it's going to be busy. Look at what they're handling. Do they have scarves packed in their bags? Okay, this show sells scarves well in the middle of February. So just, you got to keep an eye out. You got to get an eye. And like, but before COVID shut me down for shows, like shows were half my, I was making like over five figures in shows just alone. And then the rest was online sales. And then I had to transfer all of those sales. Luckily, when you do online, like, craft shows, you can translate that back to people who buy from you again online. Mm -hmm. So yes, selling finished product at shows, absolutely lucrative. Oh, man, I'll, see, I, when people always ask me about craft shows, I can't give them much experience about what I've had. I've only done like one or two and it's, and I didn't research like you did. I went to this country bumpkin craft show with people who were looking for a discount that didn't you you're like you went to a place where they're ready to spend some money so oh yeah that was a good one. i will drive i drove four hours up to muskoka for the like people who are like this lady made quilted jackets and she's like karen you gotta do 
the Bala Festival because it is good. Like everybody who owns a cottage in Muskoka comes to this festival. And I'm like, mm -hmm. okay. So, oh my gosh, was the booth fee like a thousand bucks? Yes. Did I make Ooh. over five? Yes. Woo! Yeah. Worth yeah. A four hour drive. Wow. Yeah. I didn't, people there didn't bat, a, bat an eye at paying $95 a hat. Some of them were buying two, one for each of their kids. It was just like, I like this show. Wow. And then you get invited to the ski shows, ladies groups. Ski, would you mind coming to Collingwood Horseshoe Club for our women's ski festival? And I'm like, of course I will. Sure. Those shows alone, you bring your trunk, your cable, 10 grand. Like you'll, you'll make... And, and then those, they've invited you, so you don't even have to pay a fee. You just bring your stuff. Ah, oh, you are a genius. Okay, let me get the Kendra. You're a genius. All right. <laughs> I've crocheted bags and washcloths and posted them to Marketplace, but I can't seem to get them sold. Any advice? Uh, washcloth. You know what would be best, Kendra? It's very. I'd say book a call with me because I need to see your photos. It's probably the photos. And then if you have a clear idea of who your customer is that you're trying to uh, target in your photos. Cause I'll, I like, without seeing any kind of photos, I can, I'm just going to guess if it's kind of like a mishmash of a whole bunch of different things and people hop on it and they're not quite sure whether it's baby items or handbags or hats they're looking at, they're not going to try and stick around to figure it out. They'll just hop off your site. Mm -hmm. So if you give them something more to kind of picture it's a little bit easier to figure out what you sell. Like if you hop onto my Instagram, for example, right away, I'm I'm targeting a particular type of person. Sure, women, kids, and yeah. I don't know, dog walkers will buy from me too. But who am I targeting? I'm targeting the ladies who, who are probably cottagey, who like, you know, going to walks in the escarpment and stuff, you know, like stuff like, but I'm targeting a particular style of how women are. And then, and then everybody else will just come anyway. So just, you have to have kind of an aesthetic and a niche. So book a call with me. Maybe we can figure out the direction you might want to go. And then it'll almost be easier to make a decision about your photos and, and yeah. products. Uh, by the way, everybody, I've seen all these comments in the live stream. Everybody's loving us and so we should have more Oh, I would, I would That's love this. I, you know me. I will talk to business about business with anyone who will have me because I love it. This is like my drug, girl. I ran out of wine. <laughs> oh, well, what let me... Joy said, how many streams of income do each of you have? Is it difficult to keep track of so many streams? Who wants to go it's first? Nice. Uh, I haven't counted lately because okay. I lost my wholesale stream over COVID. Yeah. I got, yeah. I have 16. Oh. <laughs> I, have 16 I want to manage a good income. six of them well. Yeah. That I I remember writing it down. I probably have like, because I had Wholesale Canada Bliss, Retail Canada Bliss, and then like Retail Show Canada Bliss, Online Canada Bliss. Then I have, um, I'm getting into like helping people with their businesses. So coaching Coaching is uh, my line, one of my line of business. Then, then YouTube, and yeah. then, and then um, I was like, I'm growing my blog pattern line. So to me, six mm -hmm. is what I can handle. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have. I didn't realize I had sixteen, but my mom's <laughs> like, if something happens to you, where, where are we gonna find your income? So. I had to gather up every place I got income from and put it on an Excel spreadsheet and it's labeled in case I die. So <laughs> it's, it's printed off so my family can find it. But yet 16, I, um, the main three YouTube blog pattern sales. And it seems, I guess it's not as many as 16 because you can put it, I affiliate market. Let's say I uh, make a pattern with a special yarn. If you buy that yarn, I'll get a percentage of that yarn sale. So a lot of that is affiliate marketing. So yeah, so I guess it's four or five. Oh, and book sales. And what else do I sell? T-shirt sales. I sell those too. I sell everything. If I'm going to like not go back to my day job, 
I'm selling like a Jamaican. I work <laughs> 15 million jobs. I'm working. But luckily, these are passive incomes or streams of incomes that can work behind the scenes as I'm crocheting a pattern. So I do recommend passive income. Yeah, I love your expressions. You're hilarious. You're so funny. Oh, Joy loves this. Look, you both are so fantastic, by the way. Beautiful inside and out. Well, thank you, Joy. And guys, do you have any questions? I'm enjoying myself. Once this like drops below 70, then maybe we'll ease out. But guys, if you're just getting here and you're wondering where the pumpkin patterns are, the pumpkins are down below. I've already drank a glass of wine, so I'm energized. You can get them free looks. <laughs> now we're talking about business. If you have any business questions, please ask now. Put question marks in front of it. And Kara and I will try to help you out. And if you want even further information about how to grow your own crochet business successfully. Down below is a link for Karen. She's offering a free consultation. She has a wonderful course that helps you step-by-step, step, taking you from even building a niece to building a huge, not huge, well, yeah, you never know. Yeah, Building a business. Be as huge as you want. Yeah, as big as you want. She's going to help you get there. And I'm not saying this just because she's my friend. I paid and taken the course myself thank okay. you thank you for trusting me with your mind <laughs> <laughs> i trust you with my mind and wallet and luckily since after taking a course and becoming her friend i've got a lot of free nuggets in there too so <laughs> you are worth the money it totally is six years to a passion well, okay. and hobby into a career read it out loud for us go ahead okay what are your experiences with turning a passion and hobby into a career how does doing what you love affect your motivation and drive wow <laughs> That's, that's a good question. Um, okay. There's like, it's, it's all I can say is it's like, if you've only worked conventional work in your life, which is how I got into it, it's almost shocking when you dive into full entrepreneurship, because um, I did a video on this, if you end up deciding to watch it, but I think the biggest shock was one you got to be great at one, being an independent worker. If you weren't great at keeping yourself motivated and organized and independent working before, it will fall apart once you start your business. So be good at doing that. So I'm not going to honey coat it. Yes. I, I fell prey to kind of getting lazy on some days and it doesn't help your income if you're that way. If you do that, you will have no income one month. You know <laughs> what I mean? And you'll be in trouble. So then you got to do, and then two, have like a solid, make sure everyone around you who supports you, like specifically your spouse, okay? My spouse, okay? He totally supported when I told him, I'm like, I think I'm going to do it. I've got these many accounts already. My online is selling. I think I'm going to quit. And he's like, okay, go ahead and do it. Neither of us was ready. There were, there were months when we, it's like feast or famine. You're making thousands or you're making like nothing right yeah. some, some month and you're like Eat! last month was like super good and now like i'm only making a few hundred bucks this month and it's scary for them and it's scary for you and then at the same time you're like oh oh i wanted this but now i've got to soothe him and at the same time i'm not going to make my half of the budget for this yeah. month. you know what i mean there's that be ready for that have I have a coach now and she's like, have what she calls this runway. You need runway. Like you need that buffer so that you can, you know, you have until like, I know that money starts coming in a lot more than in the fall and winter than it is in the summer. I have runway that takes me from one spring to, to fall every year. But like, it takes learning that when I ran out of runway the first time, luckily I, I actually had to dip into my, um, in Canada, it's called RSPs. I guess it's called 401ks in the States. Okay. I had to dip into my 401, like 401k and I was like, oh my gosh, it's for my retirement. But like, and I was committed. I was going like, I got to pay this back because I got to have a decent retirement. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I, I borrowed from myself. I'm like, I'm borrowing for the future, but I got to make up for this. Right. Mm -hmm. So have your runway. But and then, but then once you kind of figure out what's working, it takes a while to kind of know what's working iterate and improve what's working and shed, 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 shed the crap that's not working, shed the suppliers that don't work, the customers that are paying, shed the boutiques that only place $200 orders, shed the low priced items, like once you know what's working for you, 
double down on those things. And then yes. you'll see your revenue going like this and you're making less effort towards getting your money to go higher because you're spending less money. You're like, I don't need that application anymore. I don't need how to, yeah, I'm going to discontinue that subscription and all that. Your, your income just starts going up and then, but and the gratification at that point is amazing. It's yeah. amazing. Like you feel so happy. Like you go out on these walks in the morning and you had a nice breakfast and you're thinking, yeah, yeah like you can do those things. I want to elaborate on yours where, when this does become your business, is your one runway, is that that space extra money just in case? Yeah, buffer. Okay, that buffer. So you got people like, oh, Alicia, I can't do what you, I just quit my job last year. I was not a doctor or a lawyer. I was a therapeutic counselor, AKA, I was in a, a child babysitter. I worked in group homes. I was a caretaker. I am your average girl. But while working Little John Yards on a side while doing this, I made sure I saved up eight to 12 months worth of pay before I quit my job. I've made sure Little John Yards was making an X amount of money, at least twice as much as my day job before I quit. Because like Karen said, with yarn, the pay goes up and down. So when the pay dip low in July, because it's a hundred degrees, <laughs> I was able to <laughs> dip into that year's worth of pay that I had in my little John Yarns business. That's hard to come up. I know that's not like, Alicia, how can I save that much? I did making very little money. I'm a regular girl. You know how much caretakers make. You know your friend's a caretaker too. She don't got a good... <laughs> It's tough. So yeah. you can make this happen too. It's yeah. beautiful. Oh, and then how does it affect your motivation and drive? You know, when, like, if you decide that you're finally taking the leap into quitting, one thing I didn't have was structure of how I was going to structure my day. And Alicia, you seem like you've always been naturally good at this. Like, I could tell you already have this, but... I finally figured out when you wake up in the morning, the thing that gets you out of bed is like, what's the, if you always have in your head, what's the next activity that's going to generate revenue? You always know the next thing to do. Like, you know that I've got to get these orders out so that I can get the, the payment for these orders, or I've got to get like this campaign launched or teased out because Friday, I already want to be generating sales on the Friday, Saturday, Sunday sale. Like, like the, like you just, you do the next thing. Oh, how do you, Didi, my friend. Oh, no, Didi. Didi. You, it's in the, you can go in the link below or. Um, I'll post it again right now. Yeah. You can, you can, um you can link with the, the, with Didi, but um Didi in any of my video descriptions too on my site, there's always a book a call there too. And I see you there every so often. So feel free to like, feel free to book any kind of appointment. Web. Would you suggest having your own website or bringing traffic from social media sites? Uh, like, I think we've mentioned this earlier. It's good if you've already been established on another site and build it a little bit from clientele. But definitely, if you're on a social media, like social media does help drive traffic. But what you also need to be doing is I either shot a video of this or I wrote a video on this and I haven't published it yet. But you need, oh, I know where it is. I know. I give this advice in the workshop I'm doing on Thursday. Okay. It's the third piece of advice in the video, in the workshop that I already did, but you could rewatch it on this coming Thursday. But in anything with regards to social media, with regards to newsletters or, or anything that you put out or publicize, you need a call to action. So if you don't know what a call to action is, um, my workshop will help define it for you, but I mean, that shuttle call to action is like trying to get uh, the viewer you need to, to do, do this right now. Please. Yeah, you need to do this next thing if you need to get this kind of result. So do you uh, so do you have recommend having your own website? If you have your own website, you do need your social media. You do need to be driving traffic through your own social media and through your own newsletters. And you definitely have to be good at having a call to action. And the best way to be good at having a call to action is make sure making sure you have a well-defined audience that you know how to speak to, which is also in my workshop. So, so check it out. I see some more book of calls down below. And um, I don't know about in Canada, but I'm an LLC in the United States. Is I'm incorporated. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm incorporated as well. It's not L an LLC here. It's like I'm, L I'm LTD. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> so, but I'm uh, I'm incorporated. Yes, I am. I was incorporated yeah. the before I even went to Hollywood. I just that's one thing I invested in because I'm like, okay, if this thing, the, it was always in my head. If this thing blows up, I need to protect my name. I also trademarked Canada Bliss. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I never did that. You need to trademark. Oh, you know yeah, you trademark me. You're what? technically under common law trademarked already because uh -huh. if you put anything like Little John's Yarn TM until you get it registered and you get the circle around the R, yeah. you're by common law trademarked already um, because you've been using that that brand since 2015. So by common law, you already have the trademark, but you really should apply for the register. I did not know that, but joy sets for my uh, streams of income 16. That's a lot. I know that seems a lot, but 16 might be a part of my several different affiliate incomes. I have uh, I'm a part of at least four different affiliate four different affiliate programs. It's you and this, what um, YouTube. What if I don't own YouTube? What if YouTube decides to get rid of me and mm -hmm. you can't see me on YouTube anymore? That's okay. I got 15 other streams of income. Right. So that's why. Like, I let me use that as an example. I don't know if you guys realize this, but I had a you an Instagram uh, page that was I had oh. 25,000 followers that Did I built up for the sorry. last. <laughs> this is like, <laughs> but I had 25,000 like followers that that came with me since the start of my journey, and. And then my Instagram account got hacked and Facebook, Instagram couldn't rec like get it back then. And I had an, an Olympic hat campaign launch the Thursday after the Tuesday I got hacked. But because I, pr I, I teach what I practice, I already have my entire clientele in my own, like in my own groups for like newsletters and, and, like I can communicate with them without social media. So I launched without Instagram mm -hmm. and I still made my sale. So do like, that's the thing. Alicia isn't creating more lines of business that create her more work. Yes, She's no. building on the foundation of the work that she already does. That's why it doesn't seem like a lot. Cause it's yeah. not like she's, she's like crocheting and, and, and baking and, what the lawn. Working, <laughs> every you know? day what i work at is writing a pattern editing videos all that other stuff is passive income you know posting links that's it yeah but david said uh someone asked about being an llc the best advice one ever saw the best advice one ever saw was to wait until you need it the the, the question here is when do you need it oh when and do you need it yeah. Well, the like the under the root question is yeah. like, when is the right time? When do you feel you need it? Okay. I felt like I needed it because I was making a income that I was now going to want to tax. What Like the way it works with taxes is things like automobile expenses and that sort of thing. If you can lower your pre-tax income, then you pay less HST. This is like accounting stuff. Don't take my words for all of this because tax laws are different in different provinces and states. But if you can lower your taxes be with with like um with certain expenses in your corporation prior to claiming it as income, then it's worth it. So yeah, that that there are certain things that are beneficial to having an LLC. Okay. Kendra says she thinks she wants to book a call, but she's not sure. Well, it's, it's free. And here's the it's thing, free. Kendra, like if, if you talk and you're like, let me tell you the truth, people I've spoken to, some of them don't even know what they want to sell or if they're going to even sell crochet. Some are, some people are like, well, I like baking and I like this. So some people are like on this side of like hand making, they're not even sure if they want to turn it into more than a hobby. And then I've got other people who are like, they already have a yoga studio. They're selling hats already. They're looking to scale what they have. The thing about um, the way I teach is like, I know we're handmakers, so we're as unique as our product. So I treat treat everyone the same, like yeah. the, that way. You need different kind of help. But like if, it, if what 
if I can't help you, then there are other, like, I, I also have a background in human resources. So I've consulted a lot of people in work, occupation, education. I used to work for my university, helping grads with their graduate study direction and stuff like that. So even if like, it's something else you need to be thinking about, I mean, it couldn't hurt to just find out if, if making a handmade business is right for you. It's free. Just call. Karen mm -hmm. is the most down to earth person. I don't mean to keep boosting you up or, Aww. but you are, she's become my crochet best friend. I call her my CBFF. You mm -hmm. are. It's, I know this, nothing about buying, not buying, but clicking a link and getting your free. She, this is my girl. When I'm stuck or sad or whatever about crochet life, I'm like, <laughs> Karen, you're my person. That's all I just wanted to say. But my one of my members said, another Karen, hello, everyone. I'm very, very late. It's all right. We're not talking about pumpkins anymore. We're, we're talking about business. I don't know what happened, but even my boy. I Davis hijacked your station. <laughs> Which, what did you read? I missed it. Uh, no, I said I, I, uh, I hijacked your station, but it says here, this is so swear word valuable oh I, I want oh yeah this is like this is freaking valuable <laughs> <laughs> oh let's see oh angela how do you price a vintage handmade item versus a one-of-a-kind art vintage hmm. is almost almost like one of a kind if it's vintage are you talking about something you bought that your grandma made crochet is what's the word for when you can't put a price on but something what's priceless Priceless. Yeah, priceless. British crochet is like priceless. Yeah. Oh, are you just curious? Is are you upcycling it or selling it like refurbished? That's your jam. Yeah, because like that's another thing. Like vintage handmade. I I admit it for myself. I go thrifting for fun, and I'll buy like when I see something, I'm like, oh my god, this blanket's handmade, and it's just hanging in the in the like blanket section of the Salvation Army, you know. But you know, someone made it. I will buy it because that thing needs to be saved and turned into something else someone loves. So I will turn it into like you know, an, another sweater or I'll repurpose it for like into a poncho or like, you know, you could, you could wear it some different way, like as an underlay in a denim jacket or something like that. But how do you price a vintage handmade item? Again, you have to do your research. So you have to like do comparative research in terms of like other vintage items, what they sell for retail when it's brand new and then put a price on it. Yeah. Okay, guys, remember, I said I was going to wrap this up like 45 minutes ago, but if you guys have any more questions, we're going to round this out to two whole hours. Why not? If you have any business questions, please ask right now. You have myself and Karen. And if you want to go, if you're truly want to start a handmade business, please book a link, a free consultation with Karen. It's linked down below. And even if you're just wondering about it, wondering. I'm just curious what the first steps are. Just find out. You don't have to be like, yes, I for sure, for sure want to. Like, who knows? Maybe you, like some people are ready. Some people just want to know more. So if you just want to know more, there are always other opportunities for you to learn too until you are ready, if if that's what you end up wanting to do. Yeah. Oh, and somebody just asked before we get to Kahina, somebody said, do you have a YouTube channel? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Karen V. Miguel, y'all. <laughs> just type that. Karen V period Miguel. You'll and, find yeah. it. Yeah. Actually, there's no period. I just was like no. Karen V Miguel. So M I G U E L, the U is silent. Uh, yeah. Or if you look, uh, if you if you Google crochet business and then you scroll scroll down, I mean, I might end up popping up. Yes. <laughs> okay. Kahina says, How is the market for crochet accessories? I want to make so crochet project bags, but not sure about the market for it. I'm not sure about it myself, to be honest. Okay. So this is interesting too, because I literally just wrote a video on this that I haven't shot yet. But this is um this is interesting because it goes into is there a market for crochet accessories? When you go onto Etsy, people are looking, will look specifically for crochet, this and that, and all that sort of thing. But the truth is, if you're looking to make crochet project bags, then your niche is project bags and the way that your bags look like 
denim crochet bags or canvas crafter bags. But you're not like, selling crochet, you're yeah, selling a bag. You're selling a bag in that product category, but like who your niche is, is who you're targeting. The way your product is made is sometimes it's like negligible to your customer. Like they're not looking for, uh, I am looking for a polymer molded kitchen utensil. No, 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 no. They're looking for a non-scratch spatula is what you're looking for. You know what I mean? People who are looking for crochet project bags are looking for like crafter project bags. If it's like, um, if it's made of crochet and then that's the method that you're using to make it. And that's method we're mostly all using to make the product that we're making, but we have to target it towards the group that we're. So you'll probably be targeting like crafters and handmakers and that sort of thing. But whether it's knitted or crocheted, some people can't even tell the difference. So is there a market for it? There yes, can't. there's a market for it. Everybody loves totes and bags and all that stuff. It's just a matter if you can make it for your, your niche. Okay, we'll move on to the next one. Uh, Felina, to be honest, I love crochet, but I'm not sure what to ask or where to start. Does that mean I'm not ready to start a crochet business? It depends. Do you want to crochet as a hobby or do you want to uh, try and generate income off of it? Mm -hmm. And do, and then keep in mind that once you decide that you want to create income off of it, you could be making things that you wouldn't necessarily make as a hobby all the time. Okay. But that doesn't mean you can't make things as a hobby. It's just that you're committed now to making things that are also popular or sellable trending or what the customer wants. Right. Like I know I got to go down and make nine hats after this, Yeah, <laughs> but, um, is it what I would prefer to crochet today? No, I want to play on my Addy. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you got the brand new. Oh, I know. Oh, I'm going to out. Wait. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh. This, I wish I put the affiliate link. Another way I make money, but it's not down below. So you guys can just go on Amazon. This is a knitting machine. This oh. is the most beautiful. I just thing. got one. I am addicted. This thing. I made a dozen head warmers, like in a night, and a pair of mittens that I'm waiting for. Mine's on the way from Germany. Uh, it's so beautiful. Like, you can buy cheaper ones. There's like, uh, what's it, Sinantro? They're like fifty dollar version, but this is the Cadillac. This you is have the, to get the Cadillac. It's, this is the best. Yeah, the other ones will break on you. They're stiff. They don't have the mounting. It's just worth. By the time you buy everything else that make it worth using, then you should have got the Addy. Oh, Karen, wait, wait. Do we have a problem with your? Uh, come on, here it is. Oh, what's my time it? zone. Yeah, you see it? It didn't pop up on my end. You see the comment? The comment's not on my page. I don't see it either. Hold on. Let me log in. Log in. There it is. So, I no, I'll to... keep... Go ahead. It won't let me do anything. Okay. So, once you book the time zone, then... Okay, let me just... Test you... it out. While you test it out, I'll just talk to the people? Yeah. How about that? Good idea. All right. There we go. Maria, don't worry, Kendra, we'll get right back to you. Maria says, repurposing is so much fun. When my husband's uncle passed away, I unraveled one of his sweaters and crocheted a shawl for his aunt. It was the most amazing labor of love. That is genius. I've seen a lot of those, like when people take a t-shirt, I've seen like husband's t-shirts turn into quilts or things like that. I don't think I've ever, re I did repurpose something once. My husband's grandmother had some old um, old whips, works in progress, that she never finished, probably from 1972. They were all in the bag. She's like, honey, you can have my yarn. I don't need this yarn anymore. So I went through the bag. I'm like, I feel bad taking apart somebody's whips from 1972. So I took the whips out and stuck it. I made my, I think it was my daughter. It was a amigurumi. What is that movie? They're yellow and they look like ovals and minions. I made her minion. minion. <laughs> I made her minion, but I stuffed the old scraps inside. Of course, she didn't want it. Long story short, my husband took it so he can have his grandmother's scrap yarns that's always inside this stuffed minion. So that was my old. Okay, it's fixed now. My apologies. You know what? I think it. I got booked out 
all my openings were booked out, but I just made more opening slots. So you're welcome to go ahead and book now. Oh, you booked on your openings? Awesome. So Kendra, we fixed you guys. If you have any questions for us about business, this is no longer about pumpkins. This is about your fall crochet business and making your hobby become your career. This has been my career now officially myself. I quit just last year. I'm a regular girl for a year this November. And it's been such a relief. Yes, it's. I'm still working, but I'm working doing what I want to do. I'm not working for somebody. I'm crocheting. I wish my grandma could see this. I know she would have been so happy. Like, yeah, you want to do it to the point where you're enjoying it, but but you know, don't get it to the point where you don't enjoy it. <laughs> That's kind of an obvious statement. Yeah. But yes, you can reach a point where you're wondering if you love it anymore. I actually did reach a point like that once. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that I was doing things. Uh, I'm hot. Sorry. Um, I was, I was doing, I, I added things to my business that I wasn't enjoying. And then I subtracted them from the business. And so then you're happy Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll get more into that, but we're going to go into Janelle. I hope I pronounced that right. I'm about to retire, but scared to make the step to sell my work. I copy from videos and patterns from books. Oh, my gosh. You know what, Janelle? You know how many people I coach who are, like, in this stage where they're already thinking about retiring? This is not This is not too common. There's no harm in, in, in like, trying. But, like, you do have to... Like you have to go through the mind work of why you want to do it because you have to overcome that bit of fear. Alicia, mm -hmm. do you have a video on like overcoming fear? Uh, no, but I do have a great tip on um, overcoming fear that I do myself. When I feel a knot, here we go, in my stomach right here. If I feel that, that means I have to go forward. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if that feeling holds me back, I'm not going to succeed. I'm not going to go for it. I'm not going to grow. So I always, that's my gauge. Do I feel it? Let's work past it. Just one little inch. And yes. inch by inch, somehow, some way, I have a lot of subscribers. I know three people in my real life, but somehow I managed to get a lot of subscribers. How did that happen? Oh. But like, and uh, to build on what Alicia says too, one thing that I do is, I picture what I want and then I picture it like I visualize the ideal situation. I do meditate on a regular basis, mm -hmm. like at least 30 minutes, either in the morning or if I have some quiet time after dinner. And then I picture what makes like the, the life that makes me happy. And then I imagine how will I feel when I'm doing that? And then if it brings me joy, then that's the feeling I associate with it. And then I just move Every every th next decision I make, if if I can feel that, like like if I know I could do that and get to the place that brings me joy, then I I will do it. And yes. and it's not like if it's just a matter of building your competency, that's a whole different thing. You can learn what you need to learn. It's just a matter of if you will love what you're doing when you get there. Get through that, and then after that, the learning stuff. Is just learning. Everybody can learn. And when and you have I'm people who show you, it's easy. And I want to elaborate what my CBFF said. <laughs> you also have to remember to celebrate every single goal you hit. We talk about this all the time. Sometimes you don't realize. You're just, oh, I'm still not as good as so-and-so. I'm still celebrate every single milestone. Take a second. Please do that. And then you'll realize, oh, I'm doing pretty good. I always tell myself, if I was to meet my 10-year-old self back in 198, back a long time ago, if I was to meet my 10-year-old self, we're not going to tell you the year. <laughs> if she was to ask, what is your life like today? She would probably be amazed. When I think about my life now, I'm not amazed by it. But that 10-year-old me, if I was to explain what I am and what I'm doing, she was like, wow, I can't wait to grow up and be you. So remember yeah. to celebrate every single minute. Yeah. Minute, minute. You know, Jenny, Janelle, uh, you know what I would do? I would picture it like this, like I'm almost about to retire 10 years from now. I'm already five years into my retirement. Say I want to take a trip to Disney World. I need mm -hmm. an extra, I don't know, two grand. 
but all I have is what I put away for my pension. I really need like to set aside an extra $300 a month for the next few little bit. Imagine you have your, your accessories business already on Etsy and already. like through Black Friday, Thanksgiving and Christmas, you've got your Disney money. And then you're just like, yes. huh? And you tell your spouse, hun, I got the tickets already. Like that is the kind of stuff that it's like, you yeah, know? When I started selling, my plan was never to be this woman right here. My plan was to get extra school clothes. My plan was maybe to save up some pocket money for a vacation. That mm -hmm. was it, but it happened to grow. That's yeah. it. Maria says, if your dreams don't scare you, make them bigger. Cheers to you. Good for you. Cheers. Cheers Donna says, you. I have old crochet magazines from the 60s. Oh, I missed. I'm sorry. Did I miss you? No, no. <laughs> now you're, you have to oh, share. I'm it. using my mic. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I laugh so hard. My husband talks about my laugh. He says it's piercing. But I have old crochet magazines from the 60s and 70s. I want to rework old patterns or sell items I make for the patterns. What do due diligence should I do? Oh, okay. What should you do before? Well, yeah. let me take this or you. Okay. Yeah, you take it. You take okay. it. Okay. If you're going to rework old crochet patterns, be fearful and knowledgeable of copyright patterns, but copyright only covers written patterns. Technically, if you rewrite it, it's a brand new, different pattern. And I'm not saying you're still in a crochet pattern, but how many ways can you tie a knot? Right. Really? over the course of hundreds of years of crocheting. So yeah, you can resell it. And if you make an item to sell the craft for, you don't fear, you don't have to worry about copyright. You can sell anything, no matter what the designer says, you can sell anything, at least in the United States, sold from a crochet pattern. Same for Canada? Uh, yeah, copyright laws are the same. You can only copyright written items. Mm -hmm. And um, and it would be like a you have to pretty much be full out plagiarizing, but here's a small tip. If you use a different gauge, the whole pattern changes. It's brand new. Like, you know, if you use chunky instead of like, like string, you're only going to be making three double crochet instead of 16, you know? And trust me, if you're making a brand new crochet pattern, if you look through the history of crochet, your pattern has been made. Before. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. It has. And there's only so many ways to make a hat and a doily or, you know, a scarf. So just do your thing. Fear's Karen, such a huge can you take point. over for reading for me? I can't. Oh, I yeah. Can't. Fear Thanks. is such a huge fa factor to push through. I love that you brought it up. Oh, yes. Like, I fear, like, I think I've, I went through, like, a little bit of a weird fear funk in the last few months. I think I was calling Alicia on a regular basis. <laughs> <laughs> like, honestly, it has a lot to do with if you, you just have to, like... You have to ask yourself, is this a competency issue or is this just a mindset issue? And then if it's a mindset, yeah, if it's a competency issue, that's actually an easy thing because then you just have to figure out what you don't know or fix it. Like if you don't know how to use Excel, learn Excel, learn how to double crochet, learn how to write a pattern, get a template. You know what I'm saying? But if it's a mindset issue, here's a trick I use with my daughter. My daughter has special needs, so she has a tendency to like ruminate. But think of an example in your life where you've accomplished something you couldn't. Like, I'm a terrible cook. <laughs> so, like, I, I was shocked when I finally made a soup that was amazing. And I'm like, and then, like, where you can prove that you can make money, for example, and you can actually sell something or somebody likes something you make, you've already proven yourself right. Now, just transfer that knowing to what it is you want to accomplish. You really, you could, you could really do anything. And I know it sounds like kind of trite and cliche, but you really can. Yeah. You can. I never thought I could write a course. Like, honestly, I never thought I could coach people or write a course. All my life, I was always trying to build the credibility to do it. But then through life experiences, I was kind of thrown into it. I was thrown... My my professors asked me to tutor people. My 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 career center at the university asked me to put panels together. I like 
I, once I started my YouTube people, people were like writing and asking for my advice. And I'm just like, but for me, I'm always like, I got to build the competency first. Cause I don't want to screw up anyone's life. You know what I mean? No, but you, you were building this step by step. You were made for this and your skills that you have right now was waiting for the future. You could never be you in 2001. You couldn't mm -hmm. done this. And the technology yeah. wasn't ready. There are so many other ways to make money now. Mm -hmm. And to be and seen. You never, you never know. Like, just follow your life's path, too. See where it brings you. Because sometimes, like, there was this one company that hired me. And I didn't think I was qualified enough to help them. But once I started working for them, they, I brought them so much revenue. Like they were like an, a million dollar revenue company. And I'm like, Ooh, I've only done like my own business, but they loved that I was an entrepreneur. So I would do their campaigns for them. I did their artistic direction for their fashion shoots. I was like, I was doing everything. And I'm like, they, they got into a little trouble because one of their employees had like, um, like charges against him for like oh, misconduct. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I had to do public relations management for their company. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize I'm like, wow, I have all this in them. I know how to deal with that. Oh no, I have a publicist who I know can help you out, will help us out of this one. We'll just do this. Too. And like like and then I realized like no, I do. I can I we do you do have it. I do have it. You do have it. If you're crocheting you people already are so done intimidated something. by the title or what it's that you're what's the word computer mark or internet marketing that's such a oh yeah listen, like credentialism is credentialism is like a it's it's bs like you know like yes. sometimes you have to you have to be a doctor to inject people with stuff you know what i mean yeah. but like to to be a crochet artisan i was a crochet artisan before like they invented crochet arts council okay <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah Okay. Oh man. Oh, hey, buddy. Wait, hold on. My son just came home. Why do you have a trophy? My baby dancing. Your what? Mike. You might get. He just came back from it. Can want to say hi? Uh, oh, he's only showing his hand, but he has a oh trophy. He went to a car show with his nana. He loves cars and. Oh my gosh, so, so cute. He won. Uh, he got third. Third place and in a car show. And his classes. Oh. Nana's boyfriend had third place in a classic car. Yeah, Nana got her groove back. Uh, had, <laughs> as third place in a classic car, classic show, or whatever you want to call it. Car show. I'm sorry. He loves cars. <laughs> but uh, St. Florida or St. FL says, yay, I came home from work just now and found this. Lucky me. You're welcome. And like I said, okay, we went over two hours. If you guys have any <laughs> questions, ask us now. We're here to help you. If you want to learn how to have a crochet business, we're not talking about pumpkins. If you want to see those, they're linked down in the description box below. But uh, Felina says, okay, it's your job to read. I need to. You're okay. I made a nice time. summer top to wear at a party. Afterwards, her fr her friends were asking for one. Would it be a good idea to make her an ambassador since she knows what's popular and has Ooh. a good following? I would say yes. Yeah, Why not? I, I think she's already an ambassador awesome. for you. You don't have to you don't have to name everything that you're, you know, that that's happening in in your life. If she is helping you out and you're why not? If she has a good following on social media, maybe do a giveaway. Maybe do a coupon with her. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And then that'll bring more attention to your your line, your brand, and the fact that you can Where make this these come from? cute, these cute crochet tops. I have an experience similar to that. There's a lady in my area who is a dog walker, and I didn't realize how popular she was. But every time she goes for a walk with the, her fleet of dogs, she'll take a picture with the group and send it to all the owners. And then they all the owners are, and then she'll tag Canada Bliss, and then can like then more people in the area buy from me, and it's just like, hey, there's nothing better than like your own community to help promote you and and cross promote. So I'd say yeah, plan something with her. Okay, well I think we've had a very longer than usual live stream. But guys, remember if you want to grow your business, your crochet business. Click down in a link below for the free crochet business consultation with Karen. Anything yeah. you want to add before we go? Uh, yeah, and tune in this Thursday because I'm going to re-air um, 
business tips workshop. And I'm also going to be there live, like answering questions. But prior to that, I mean, you're always all you're all welcome to go ahead. Oh, and then I have if you decide that part of our discussion, you you would like to try out my Handmade Sales Success Academy, mention Alicia's channel, because oh. I have a little something that makes it a little bit easier for you guys to join. So it's just for her group. OK, so mention her on our call. OK. All right. So, Karen, you stay right there and everybody else. I'll make sure. Well, I'm doing these every first Saturday of every single month. So see you on the very next live stream. Bye, Bye everyone. Guys.